It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Hey! Oh shit! Hey! 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 I never heard this shit. Hey! This must be the Scotland version. Hey! Oh! What boy band is this? Hey! This river's got sway? Okay! Hey! It's Shoti's birthday! It's Andrew Shoti's birthday! It's Andrew Shoti's birthday! Hey! All right, cut it off. Cut it off. Come on cut now, let me hit that. Cut hit that Stevie Wonder one time. Hit that. Hit that Stevie Wonder version one time, man. Come mm. on, man. Come on. It's Shochi's birthday. How old are you today, Shochi? Thirty six. Thirty uh, fucking yeah. six, like the Wu Tang's Chambers, nigga. Okay. <laughs> He's thirty six years old. That motherfucker is getting up there. Come on, hit it, Taylor. <laughs> Your kind of black person don't have Stevie Wonder's birthday song at the ready. <laughs> That's how you know we used to funerals. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we used to casualties and death. Dude, okay. it's really okay. We don't we don't need it. I I, I hate the uh <laughs> what? Ooh, oh god. Hey, 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 it's the breath of the you need to hush, 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 hush one second. This is the ultimate birthday song. Listen, if we're being honest, Stevie Wonder has the greatest birthday song of all time. You need to stop calling this the black birthday song. This is actually the birthday song. This shit got so much soul and so much rhythm. Intro takes a long time to get to where it needs to be, but it's just building up because you're bringing the cake out. You're bringing the cake out, you know what I'm saying? You got the goddamn candles on the cake. What the fuck? you bringing the cake out? Okay. All right, almost dropped it, but I'm bringing it out. Okay, candles is lit. Looking at the birthday boy, he's over there drunk, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Everybody's surrounding him. He doesn't want to give a speech, you know what I mean? He's just sitting there trying to figure out what should he do. It's the most awkward position in the world because it's it really fishbowl. It's the worst. It's fishbowl it like a motherfucker. Worst. You're like, shit, do I still have the energy at 36 to blow these goddamn candles out? I hope they don't have 36 candles on this motherfucker. No, it's only three. It's only four. It's only five. You're like, shit, this intro ain't dropped yet. When they gonna start singing? Shit. Oh, fuck. Ain't this a verse before you get to the chorus? Okay, now at least we got some words. Hey, hey, hey. Kiss your mom, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you grab your girlfriend, you dance with her a little bit, you know what I mean? Your pops, you give him a salute. Greg, what's happening, you know what I mean? Alex over there recording everything. Okay? Oh, Charlotte ain't here yet. Oh, shit, he just walked in. <laughs> I smell weed, it must be wax. All right. It's going down, baby. Big 36, Andrew Schultz. Okay, this is the part where everybody act like they know the words, but they really still don't. Because everybody only knows one part, and it's this part. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. All right. Woo! Oh, God. Blow it out, make a wish. <laughs> make a wish, Oates. <laughs> make a wish, baby. All right. Bro, I'm not going to I think that's the single most impressive thing you've ever done, bro. How do you feel about your birthday, man? That is the man? most impressive thing I've ever seen you do to sustain that bullshit energy for fucking two straight minutes through the music. Paint that picture. Like, we all knew where the fuck we were that's in that radio, moment. Bro. Oh, should I smell weeds? Wax here. Like, yo, that's, what is that's, happening? That's years of radio experience. Listen, fill the time. Fill the time. Fill the time, baby. Listen, it is show to oh. Oh my God, uh, and bro. today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is also brought to you by the new season of the Spotify Original Podcast Dissect. All mm. right, Dissect is a serialized music analyst podcast where they take a single album per season and examine the lyrics, music, and meaning behind one song per episode. Their new season is all about Kendrick Lamar's 2017 album, Damn, unpacking this Pulitzer Prize winning album note by note, line by line. Scream Dissect on Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast because great art deserves more. Then a swipe. Mm. Okay? Uh, happy birthday, Andrew Schultz. Thank you, sir. And the sad part about life is when you're celebrating somebody's birthday, uh, you end up having to celebrate somebody's death. Mm. I don't want to say celebrate. You're celebrating somebody's life because they died. 100%. R.I.P. 
Spoon. Yeah, man. John Witherspoon. Jesus Christ. You know what's so crazy? John Witherspoon has always seemed old, right? Yeah. And you really look at these older people and you really just don't ever know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. I said, a lot of our celebrities, you know, whether they actors, musicians, like they're up in age. Like we had Patti LaBelle on the show this weekend. I was having a... She looked great, by the way. Looks amazing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But you forget she's 80. Yeah. Uh, how old is Patty? She got to be like either late 70s or 80. Is she the one making the pies? Making the fucking pies, yeah, man. Yeah, dude, she's been killing it. You know what I'm saying? It. Yeah. But it's like when you're having a conversation with her and like I'm I'm, at, I'm talking to her about death, you know, does she ever question her own mortality? And mm. cause, yeah, because I mean, 75. Because people around her, like her peers, the Aretha Franklins, the Diane Carrolls, yes. they've passed away. Yes. So does that, how did that make you feel? You know what I mean? Like, What did she say? She said that she doesn't think like that. You know, um, she feels like she's just going she gonna to be here and she's just enjoying life. You know, she said it was a period of her life where she did feel like she wanted to die. Yeah, because she said for like five years she had lost her voice. And that was everything. Yeah. That was her identity. Yeah. That was her gift. She said five was... years she had lost her voice. She didn't know. She didn't realize that she, she, she said she didn't know what it was. And she just said it just came back. She said she used to do shows and she used to be like feeling so bad for the people at the shows because they used to be like, she ain't got it no more. Patty ain't got it no more. And she was like, it just it just came back. You know, and she said in that moment, she felt like she wanted to go. You know? I guess because she felt like she didn't have anything to live for if she couldn't sing. Right. Or yeah. it's all for the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tricky thing, man. Life. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of reflecting a bit last night. I feel like John Wilson made his mark, though. Oh, dude, absolutely. It. Bang, 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 bang. That's it. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, man. And he's, he's been in such classic shit. Yeah. Friday movies. Granddad on the Boondocks. The Wayans Brothers. The Wayans Brothers. Like, yeah. I just feel like... Boomerang. Yeah. Like, I just feel like he's made his mark. Jay-Z, give it to me video. Yeah. Like, those are, no, those are classic shit. Y'all joking? That's, a, that's classic shit to be a part of, bro. Yeah. What you was reflecting on last night? Just life in general, man. It's like... Oh, shit. Having that pre-birthday mortality. Real talk. Mortality I, conversation bro, with yourself. It was like... Uh, it wasn't even mortality. It was like... I went to a bar, I did a show, and I went to a bar, and I sat at the bar by myself, and I ordered a drink, and uh, I sat there, and I just started thinking about, like, it was the first time I've had a moment to just kind of reflect, right, in a while, because we've just been going, going, going. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, what is the purpose of all this? Like, what is the purpose of, like, working so hard and never having a time to just enjoy it? And... I started thinking like, is it worth being on the top if there's nobody there to share it with? Mm. And I think that so many people get caught up in like the conquering of things, you know, like maybe Jeff Bezos and, and Zuckerberg. I don't know if, if, if they feel that way, but like they want to conquer and then you conquer the world and then you're alone, mm. you know? So it's really important to me. I realized in that moment that like when I'm on top, that I can share that with all the people that helped me get there. Well, I think that's like, really fucking important. And share the journey as well. Like take time on the fucking journey to go, Hey man, look what we're doing. This is pretty awesome. Is it, isn't it cool what we've achieved? Like this is amazing. All right, let's go to the next level. But the, I, it was just one of those moments where I was like, I'm not going to fucking waste the journey. I think what you're experiencing right now is a uh, process and purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Because in life we always tend to forget the process. The process is the most fun part. Yeah. Like that yeah. journey is the most fun part. Like my you, mom would say that. When yeah. you go back and you sit around and you think about where you are, you're not just, yeah. you're not thinking about being on that stage. You think about everything. And when you and Alex get on the plane, Dude. when y'all first started the YouTube page, whatever the fuck it was, like yeah, you yeah. think about that journey. Like that's the thing that you're sitting around when you're on that boat in Australia. Like, yeah, man, we started this fucking YouTube page. Yeah. Yo. Like you, you start thinking about the process yeah. and then the purpose comes with knowing that your true purpose in life is service to others. Right. That shit ain't about us. I've, yeah. never, I, I, my, I, I've always said it. I like throwing more assists and I like scoring points. Yeah. That is the joy. Yeah. That is the joy. Because like when it's just you up there, it's just you. It's fucking lonely, dude. That's it. And it's sad. And who gonna tell you? Who gonna tell people about you? You just the nigga on the top of the hill or the white guy on the top of the hill yelling and screaming <laughs> about how great you are. Nobody can hear you. Yeah. You're way up there. And you're screaming like, who the fuck is that? Look at that crazy motherfucker all the way up there by itself. You're way up there and you're going, hey, isn't this view great? Wait. Nobody there. Oh, wow. But when I you empower some somebody people. over here and empower somebody over there and yep. empower somebody over there and there and there, you got all of these people just talking about yeah. you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, man. Just sharing Process those moments. It's, it's very, uh, 
It's very, yeah. It was That's very why important. I appreciate birthdays so much, man. Why? I never used to be a big birthday person, probably because I was raised Jehovah Witness. So we never celebrated them to begin with. Yeah. So they never seemed like a big deal to me, you right. know? But I appreciate birthdays no more now because of death. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're approaching it. Um, no, nah, I'm not approaching. I don't. Th- I don't think I'm approaching it. I would. I would. We're all not. approaching. We're that. all approaching it at some point. It's life. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, I want as many birthdays as I can possibly get. Mm. I think that you know we put so much emphasis on youth, mm-hmm. and we don't even realize that you're really not young that long. <laughs> like, like you're young from like one literally you're Bro, really young for like 18 years you know what my dad would always say youth why is it wasted on the young yes it's so fucking yes. true right like once you get up here you're like man when I was 18 if I knew the shit that I know now and you, th- you throw it away all the way and that's part of the journey it is what it is that's it but I think that's why well, obviously we don't want to die, but I think that's why we really try to stretch out these end of our lives. Cause it's like, once you finally start to figure a few things out, you're like, nah, let me, well, let me really, play in this for a little bit. You really start to enjoy life. Yeah. Like it's certain things that I'm not going to bypass anymore. Like if my people are having a milestone birthday or just a birthday period, yeah, yeah. I want to be there to celebrate with yeah, them. Yeah. If, I, if I can, if I can physically be there, I'm going to be there. Cause yeah, yeah. I just think that. That is part of the process that we tend not to enjoy. Like you shouldn't just blow, you shouldn't just blow past your birthday. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you should enjoy it. You should eat a fucking cupcake. Yeah, you should expect to get a blowjob later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm serious. You should expect somebody to take you to a nice dinner. Yo, I, I turn. I'm I, serious. I turn down the blowjobs, the birthday blowjobs. Why? Because I don't want to set a precedent that the blowjob is a gift. It should Ooh. be a regular thing. Ew. Do you know what I mean? But I feel I like, like if, that. if we put it on a pedestool, <laughs> yeah, then yeah, when yeah, it's yeah. not the birthday, she's down there sucking like, why would I be giving him yeah, I a never, blowjob yeah, right. on his yeah, not right. birthday? I never liked that Jeremiah song, <laughs> Birthday Sex. Fuck that. Yeah, I don't want sex on your birthday. How you gonna give me the same shit on Thursday? Exactly, it's the thought that counts. So put some thought into it. God yeah, damn it. Bring some other girl for some sex. <laughs> See, I know. <laughs> That's the gift. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. No, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I just think everybody should enjoy life simply because death exists. That's something Ryan Holiday been trying to tell me for the longest. He gave me this coin, and this coin is like a mortality coin, and it's like you're supposed to look at it, and it's supposed to remind you. It says something on the coin like, you don't have much time, <laughs> which sounds mad morbid, but it's true. It's true as fuck. Think about how, how old are you? 41. 41. Yeah. I want you to think about right now how fast 41 years has gone. Shit. Yeah. And Does when, it not feel like. Yeah. And when you put it in, when you look at somebody like John, John, John Singleton was 77. Mm. So that means I got like 30 more years left, which. Bro. That shit go by It's fast, less bro. than the snap. Like, <laughs> think about everybody listening right now. Everybody listening to this podcast right now. We've been doing this for five years. Yeah, man. Right? Imagine yeah, someone's man. like, you're going to spend five years in jail. You'd be like, holy shit, how am I going to manage five years? This is how fast. Yeah, man. It's a crazy thing. And usually, I don't like birthdays because I, I don't like forced attention, right? Like, I've been fortunate enough in, the, in this life where if I want attention, I can get it. You know? And I think there is that, like, forced attention thing with a birthday. But I like this perspective that you bring now. It's like, make it a reflective time. Yes. It's not necessarily like a celebration time as much as it is like, what? where are we? What has happened? We're still here. We forget about the happy that's in birthday. Yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah. You're happy to still be here. Yeah, grateful. Like, I hate when people say, oh, such and such would have been 78 today. No, he's not. He's dead. He would not have been 78 because it's not possible because he's actually dead. So stop saying that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Say today would have been such and such a 78th birthday. birthday. You know what I mean? Because that person, like, and I I was with uh, Delilah, salute to Delilah. Delilah works here at iHeart. We did Dr. Oz a couple weeks ago, and she said, like, one of her sons had killed himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she was like, he's forever 18. Right. And that's true. It's like a vampire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's absolutely positively true. Like, that's what it is. And guess what? If I think about, man, if I had died at 18, mm. I'd have never got to really experience life. Mm. Like, I feel like I'm living right now. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I've gotten mm-hmm. to do some things. I got yeah. some experiences. Like, can you imagine if you didn't get to, if you didn't see past 20, 21? Yeah. Man, no. So I appreciate it. And I look forward to my 50s and I look forward to my 60s and I look yeah, forward I to my 70s. Yeah, I'm not afraid of old age. Mm-mm. Like some people get a, like they have a fear of it. I'm not. I, I actually am excited for it because I feel like there's this this completely different part of life. And it's one of the things I kind of really admire about Duval because I feel like he's old as a young person. But like we're in the rat race now. We're going, 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 trying to get to the top, trying to get to the top. And then 
I feel like your old age is unlearning all of that, is unlearning oh, all yes. the grind, right? It's learn how to just be like, hey man, you want to just like sit on a bench in a park and enjoy the day? That's the beauty. That's the be- yo. I never growing up, growing up, my grandmother had a porch. Everybody had a porch. Yeah, and we never wanted to be on the porch. We'd sit there and be like, man, let's go do something. Let's go yeah. jump on the porch. Yeah, yeah. Now. That's What's all the up? fuck is. <laughs> We're on the porch with it. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. sitting in the backyard doing nothing. Yeah. Like that is the beauty of the beauty of life is to get old enough to appreciate doing nothing. nothing. That yeah. And I think it might take time to get there. Cause I'm like a you know, I can be an anxious guy and I want to like work and get shit done. So like I think I'm gonna have to learn how to not do. Let me tell you, I like what you said about anxiousness, right? Because I thought about this the other day when it comes to anxiety. Um I think a lot of times we get anxious and our anxiety kicks in because we're so focused on where we want to be or where we think we should be. Mm-hmm. And we're simply not appreciating where the fuck we are. And that's why I said you got to enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment of this day. Like, be happy. Like, yeah. I am Andrew Schultz. I am 36 years old. I'm making my own way. I don't live with my parents anymore. Yes. Like. <laughs> I fucking like, did it, guys. You did it? No, for real. You gotta, you gotta yeah. pat yourself on the back and just enjoy that moment. Like, yeah. and that'll keep you from being anxious. Like, don't think about nothing else. Like, yeah. don't worry about what the next thing is. Like, and sometimes you just gotta stop and enjoy the fucking moment. I think that's what birthdays are, man. Stopping and enjoying the moment. Yeah. Just a reflection. What did we do this year? What did Whoa. we do this year? This year was great. This year was not bad. This is a fucking amazing year. This year is not fucking bad. Uh, listen, I thought this year was great. Yeah. You know, we did fucking Joe Rogan. Yeah, you, know, you broke a million subscribers on YouTube. Close, we're getting there. I thought you got a million already. No, I, d- I hit a million on the uh, specials. Oh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, 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 gotcha. All the specials gotcha, over. But either a way, I mean, yeah, even yeah. even minus the personal stuff. Yeah, yeah. we're here. Yeah, because if you ask me, this year is a dub for a number of reasons. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if I if I had to grade the year in hip hop, I would give hip hop a fucking F. Really. And 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 it has nothing to do with the content of the music, anything like that. It's just the fact that Nipsey's not here. Ah, uh, F, failing great, failing fucking great. Yeah, maybe maybe next year I can see the 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 lesson in it all. Right, I have yet to grasp the lesson in it all. Right, because I don't like I don't like when people say, "Oh, you live and you die." That's true, but yeah. you shouldn't live and get murdered. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. If you die, you die. Like, I don't know how John Witherspoon died, but it seemed like it was of some natural causes, old age, whatever. That's how it's, yeah. it's all supposed to be. Let life take you. Let life take you, man. Yeah. Let life take you. I, I would rather I would rather your choices take you. Meaning, like, if you ate a bunch of fucked up food and you ended up with diabetes and you die, like, okay, well, at least, you know, you made those choices to do it. Have somebody else take your life? Yeah. Nah, it's bro. It's kind of hardwired into us to, to be grossed out by that, right? Or to be revolted by it, right? Like, that's why it's just the idea of something else taking you. Yes. Right? Like, or even, like, even stealing Right. It's wrong because an outside source is taking it from you. If the wind knocks your ice cream cone out of your hands. Yes. We don't go, oh, my God, it was stolen from you. Yes. Yes, that happens. Anytime you that's take away, fucking life. Anytime you take away somebody's power of choice, it's criminal. It's criminal. Absolutely. It's it's whether it's their life, whether it's their property, any of that kind of shit. Yeah. Their, butt, their vagina. Their vagina. Free. We recognize like, yeah. it. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like maybe that's the crux of our morality. Don't impose yourself on anybody else. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, every yes, law yes. kind of breaks down from that. Yes, hey, this is yes, my property. Yes. Don't be on my property. Yes, yes, Don't yes, move yes, into yes. my shit. Know your boundaries, basically. Know your fucking boundaries. Yeah, 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 and when yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. encroaches on your boundaries and it affects you, it takes your life or something like that, we're really, we're horrified by it. Yeah, I can accept, um, I can accept damn near any, Natural any type death. of death. I can even, even car accidents make sense to me. As long as it's not drunk driving or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, no, no one but hits even, you. But even with that, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Because it's still somebody made a poor choice. Oh, no. They are drunk driving themselves. Yeah, if, you if did it yourself. If I was drunk yourself. driving and I got behind the wheel and right. something bad happened. Yeah, yeah. You know that's on you. That. Nobody took that from you. Did, even, oh, man. Even when somebody, that's why that's why driving drunk is so bad. Because it's like, yo, you're, you're, you're not only being selfish, you're not giving a fuck about nobody else on the road. Because you might get behind the wheel and kill somebody. Bro, driving drunk should be completely legal if nobody else was involved. Yeah, like yeah, if everybody yeah, yeah. had their own highway and you want to drive on your own highway yeah. and then just crash your car and kill if, yourself, if, if, if that's it was up to you, to die, what die ways and it's only you on the highway, you good. Yes, but the thing. fact that you could kill some mom absolutely, absolutely. and his kid and her kid going home, that's why we got to make it illegal. Absolutely, man. There's a. Um, did you listen to the Kanye album? I've been 
I did. And your thoughts on that? I um, you know what? We should let's do a mid roll and come back and talk about that. Okay. I don't want to connect that with death. I actually want to get away from this death conversation because it's sad. It's, it's it's making you sad. <laughs> oh, how, we, um, I guess yeah, we could do the mid roll. Why? I was just looking at the time. We're fine. Um, you hymns. You've heard us talking about hymns and how they are helping guys look their best. Uh, if you haven't yet, it's time to see what they're all about. Now, it's my personal uh, belief that DJ Envy has been fucking with hymns. All right? <laughs> uh, because his hair grew so fast. Looks good. So quickly. It's unbelievable. Okay? But this Black Friday, you can secure the best deal of all. And that's a healthier, thicker hairline with 4 Hymns Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. Now, Chris, you do you, you do lips Casey Crew, right? Does he have Hims ads? We'll, we'll get it. Does he? I think he... Envy got put on the Hims, bro. Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I'm positive he has, man. Uh, but all you got to do is just answer a few quick questions. The doctor will review. And if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to be shipped directly to your door. Order now. All right. All listeners can get started with the Hems Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy somewhere else. Go to 4 slash B-I. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash B-I. 4 com slash B-I. Kanye's album. You know what's so crazy? What's up? I had totally forgot about Kanye's album until you said something about it. Mm. Um, I like the album. <sighs> let me see. Is, do I like the album? Let me let me see. Let me see. Okay, okay. I listened to the album twice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't dislike the album. My biggest critique of Kanye West's album is that the production is great, like most of his albums always are. The songs, the song structures are great. The worst part of Kanye West album is absolutely Kanye West. Interesting. Kanye West sucks on every song. And it's not even it's not even his his lyrics, it's his voice. It's something about Kanye's voice on these records. What I would have done if I was Kanye West, and I'm not Kanye West, mm -hmm. and I know I'm not a musician. I'm just telling you what I would have how I would have maybe made this a better project. If certain songs he shouldn't be on, right? Like the song with the clips and Kenny G. Mm -hmm. Instead of Kanye singing the hook, bring in a real vocalist and just let Malice and Pusha do their thing along with Kenny G. Mm -hmm. The song with Ty Dolla Signs and Aunt Clemens, Kanye don't need to be on that record. Yeah. Like, like, give that to somebody else. Like, go get Lecrae, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, go get go get real rappers other than Lecrae. Like, Lecrae's a real rapper, but go get rappers that are, I guess, secular since now you're doing gospel, gospel music. Right. Get secular rappers and let them rap about God. It's right. not like these rappers haven't done it. It's not like a Styles P or Jadakiss haven't ever rapped about their spirituality. It's not like a Fabulous can't rap about their spirituality. It's not like a Lupe Fiasco can't rap about their spirituality. Go get, go get common. Go get Chance. These, Chance. Yes. Where is Chance? Yes. Yes. This would have been a great album minus Kanye West. Kanye should have sat back and been a part of the choir on this one. You know what I'm saying? No, for real. Mm -hmm. He should have been a part of the choir. Let, yep. the, let the choir do their thing yep. and bring in other artists to tell yep. his story. And I was wondering about this. I said, maybe... Kanye's at the point where his stories are so personal now that he can't have ghostwriters. You understand what I'm saying? Because he's got mm. other people trying to write his stories mm. and tell his tales. And it's just something about it that's just not connecting. Like, it's inauthentic. It's, it, it don't feel authentic. Yeah. Good project, though. Like, everybody saying the album's whack. I'm like, I don't agree with that at all. I think that there's some great songs on there with great production, mm. great hooks and everything. I just think the worst part of the album is Kanye West. Yeah, I thought it was trash. Really? Yeah, I was listening to it on a flight and I was skipping songs. Is it because you're an atheist? No, I'm because I'm not. Oh, you're not? I thought you were an atheist. No, and I listen to religious music. Mm. Like, I listen to Hillsong. Hillsong be slapping. Slapping! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hillsong you know, be slapping. So it's like, I don't know. I just, I, if I'm skipping songs, it, there's got to be something that there's isn't there. There's only one there. song on the album I think is totally whack. Which one? Closed on Sundays. That's right. the shit about Chick Fil A. Yeah. That shit is gaba. Yeah. By the way, and I love the concept because I love the fact of being closed on Sunday like Chick Fil A, spending time with your family and all that yeah. shit like that. Great messaging mm -hmm. in it. It's just a terrible record. Yeah. Horrible garbage. That's yeah. the only song that I would say absolutely should not be on this album. Yeah. Everything else, the worst parts of the album of Kanye, bro. I think you yeah. like these records if you get rid of Kanye was. Maybe. I love Follow God. Follow God is track three. That shit track hard. Three. It was either two or three that I really liked. It three was something slapping. Uh, 
But yeah, I was just skipping the songs. I just wasn't entertained. And here's the thing: I'm not a Kanye hater. Like, I, dude, Ultra Light Beam is one of the, my favorite Amazing. songs ever. So, Amazing record. And, and we were talking about this. Alex and I were talking about this. The expectation I had for the album was every song was going to be like Ultra Light Beam, and I was going to just fucking tear up the entire time because that was such a beautiful song. But excuse me. I just didn't really like it, which is fine. It is what it is. You know how bad something got to be to have God all over it and Jesus and people say they don't like it? Son, you know Yo. how bad something's got to be to be listening to it on a flight and it's about God Lord have and mercy. I'm skipping the songs? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Yo, think about it. You, if you walking down the street and somebody hands you a Jesus pamphlet, you take that pamphlet, bro. Oh, yeah, you do. You take, you like, shit, man. You, you put that fake, that fake $20, you know the $20 <laughs> is folded and then you open it up, it's for Jesus. Yes. And you want to be like, man, fuck you. All right, man, you put, put that shit right in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. I had that shit for six years. Damn. On my fucking dresser. Wow, so that's the, that is the equivalent. Throwing, throwing, one of the, throwing that pamphlet away or throwing that $20 bill away is the equivalent to y'all deleting Jesus out of your playlist. That's it. <laughs> if you, if you send in your Jesus, if you got that shit on your screen, and you send it to the trash bin, mm -hmm. that's the equivalent. I don't think it's bad though. I, 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 I didn't like Jesus. Um, can we can we get into a convo though that's that's more less about like the quality of the album because some people you. might like it and some people might not. Mm -hmm. But like Kanye has been going on this press run where he continuously speaks about himself as the greatest creative of uh, of his generation or something like that, and uh, he keeps calling he himself a genius. Let's have that discussion because it. Do, are you, uh, there's no doubt that he's a, a amazing at music. I'm not taking music he's away from him. He's an artistic genius. Is he artistic? How so? I mean, outside he, of music, he's 100. percent But you know my theory about the music thing. I think he's just appropriates white shit and just makes it cool for black people. He's designed a dope ass sneaker, bro. I'm not going for the sneaker is a rec a replica of the Roshi Run. I don't know what the fuck that is. It was a Nike sneaker that he just oh. ripped off for the Yeezys, and then he's just doing dad shoes. I love it. I'm 41. I got a corn on my goddamn. But they existed on this prior. White baby toe. But they existed prior. All the shit that he's done has existed yeah. prior. He just made it cool for. Uh, uh, you know, a, you know, a small section of the of the population. So musically, I gotta say, I gotta, I gotta say, he's a genius. He's a genius. Though. Musically, yeah, yeah. he's genius. Nobody's That's why I say questioning just art. Like music is an art. Like I say, he's just a art, 100%. artistic genius. He start talking about anything else, he gotta shut the fuck up. Hey, hundred percent. Not saying that, but I think his greatest, I think his greatest ability and asset is his influence. I think he's the ultimate influencer. Top three hip hop influence. Top three most influential rapper of all time. Or cultural influencers. Cultural influence. Like he's getting people to wear certain clothes. He didn't invent the clothes, but he's getting people to wear them who would never wear them. Hmm. Right? Like he's getting he's getting young hip hop influence kids to wear dad shoes, to wear Nirvana we sweatshirts. Bro. <laughs> Dude, since when was fashion comfy? We were wearing that's Air Force Ones and Timberlands for I, fucking ten and, years, and getting corns on my feet, and, and bunions. That's what, I think that's what's changed. I think people realize how fucked up a lot of that shit is. For but it foot. took somebody with mega influence to do it. Yeah, right. Like, there's no doubt that he's influential. So, if influence makes you a genius in his mind, sure, he's top three. You're a uh, genius. Top three most influential rappers of all time are Tupac Shakur, Jay Z, and Kanye West. I'm with it. Cool. Let's do it. Top three. Outside of hip hop, I think he's even influential, right? In terms of clothing, yeah, hundred I mean, percent. The thing I've loved the most about Kanye over the years is that uh, he really did, he really did push away toxic masculinity in hip hop. Like he was the he was the antithesis. What's the word? Antithesis. There you go. Yeah, yeah. my list stops me from doing stuff like that, executing words like that. But he was like when 50 was like the guy, the Don't street guy, yeah, yeah. the rapper, you know, the, the gangster. He was like what you con would consider toxic masculinity, right? Kanye came in vulnerable. Yeah. I love my mom. Uh, I'm not afraid to cry. I'm emotional. Like he bought that sacred masculinity, divine masculinity to the game when toxic masculinity was running rampant. And he bred a whole generation of rappers because of that. The Drake's, 100%. the Kendrick's, the Coles, the Wale's, the Chance the Rappers, they're all lying if they say they weren't fruit all Kanye West's truth. Absolutely. So you know? he had immense influence in yeah. that regard as well. Yeah. Right? So here's yeah. what I would say. He's incredibly influential. But I don't think he's as influential as Kim. Kim who? Kardashian. I think Kim Kardashian is more influential than Kanye because Kanye can get you to wear certain clothing. Kim Kardashian has gotten women around the world to change their face and body. Nah. She has literally changed the shape 
and facial structure of women. Women are getting fillers, lip injections, and all these things to have. If you go around LA, you go to clubs in LA, you will see Kim Kardashian 10 times in the same club. They actually look like Kylie now. Regardless. Kylie is fruit off of Kim's tree. Kim's tree, right? The reason I can't say she's more influential is because there's nothing more powerful than music, bro. Music move, move mu- but music, music moves, isn't bro. making you change the shape. What is a bigger investment? Putting a shirt on your body or changing the shape of your body forever? It will never be the same again after you make that change. Yeah. I can throw out a pair of Yeezys. I can't throw out a pair of lips. Yeah, but Kanye influences you. He influences your mind in a different way. He makes like I know kids that said they went to college because of Kanye. Like seriously, like like I know people who. Who Kanye just helped get through that? He helped him get through life, bro. And a different like music is way more powerful than whatever Kim doing. I and I'm I, not saying Kim's not influential. She is very, but man, bro. I just don't know. Music got Kanye Kim. Say again. Music got Kanye Kim. Hundred <laughs> percent. But Kim got Kanye to do lipo. Hey, you got a point. Hey, hey. He kind of got points. <laughs> I'm saying, kind of got point, Kim man. got her dad to be her mom. Yeah. What? Give me the boy, Taylor. Yo, you lost that your boy privileges, right. yo. Yo, you lost your boy <laughs> privileges. Out here dropping tank singles. <laughs> exactly. We're not even doing tank. Yeah. Yo. You, know, you know what else is interesting about the Kanye thing? I but don't like Do you see what I'm saying, though? No, I feel you. Like, that is, like, what she has done, I don't think we consider it influence because it's not. No, 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 I do. It's, you do. You've no, spoken do, about this a lot. Yeah, I do. But it's like, it's an influence in a different way. But like, we literally have people changing the shape of their body forever. Like, that is insane to me. I mean, I think I think bigger than that, uh, Kim has changed just the culture of celebrity. Like, like everybody's following Go the Card- that. everybody's following the Kardashian model of celebrity, which, which is? is being famous for nothing. Like, he, like your your com- your biggest commodity is you. Like, for whatever reason, you know how Seinfeld had a show about nothing? Like, the Kardashians have had a reality show about nothing. Like, their whole existence has been about nothing. It started with a sex tape, and then for whatever reason, since that sex tape, we could not keep our eyes off this girl. Then she introduced her family, and we can't keep their eyes off their off the family, and we don't know why. We're all invested. This is going on over a decade or yeah, better, bro. Yeah, yeah. We're all invested, and we don't know why. With that said, that's why I don't get mad at Kanye West when people say Kanye West is using religion to sell records or he's using God to sell records or using God to sell merch because it's a very slippery slope when you're an artist, right? Yeah. When you're an artist, when you're a public figure, your greatest commodity is you. So whatever is going on in your life, you're going to talk about it. Whatever's going on in your life, you're going to talk about in your stand-up. Whatever's yep. going on in my life, I'm going to talk about in, in, in radio. Yep. I'm going to write about it in books. So our greatest commodity is our life. So if Kanye's you know, going through this thing where he's into God right now. Yeah, that's going to be reflected in his music. That's going to be reflected in his music. Yeah. So you can't really be mad at him. You can't be mad at him because he named the album Jesus is King. You can't be mad at him because he's putting Jesus on merchandise. That's where he's at in his life right now. Yeah. Your greatest commodity when you're an artist is you. You're a public figure, so you're always selling you. So if that's who Kanye West is right now, that's what he's selling. Can't really be mad at that. That's actually the Kardashian motto. We're the ones that keep buying into this shit. The car- yeah, it's interesting. We used to think that you needed to have a skill to be famous. Nah, Kardashians changed that. Paris, to was, a certain extent. Was Paris the first? Is Are the Kardashians... Paris was the first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've told this story before, and I know I've told this or story. Or Marilyn Monroe? Was she that? Paris was, Mar- was definitely Kim's blueprint. And I and I know for I know this for a fact, because I, I've told y'all before, when I used to work for Wendy Williams, yeah. Kim and Courtney, sometimes Kim and Chloe would fly into New York, and they would literally just come hang out in Wendy's office when she worked at WBLS. They was cool with Wendy's uh, assistant at the time, talent booker, Nicole Spence. Salute to Nicole, that's the homie. And they just used to be there wanting to get an interview. Yeah. And Kim used to be in there talking about how she was going to Paris Hilton the game. She used to be in there saying that. She used to be in there talking about all of these. So, what is it about do. Paris Hilton? What is it about Kim? Like, what did they? What did we learn from that? That we don't care about skill. We care about lifestyle. Not just lifestyle. You said it earlier. What Paris was on the hill by herself. Go go again. Paris was on the hill by herself. She was at the top alone. There was nobody else doing that at the time. Uh-huh. Reality show stars. It might have been like Nicole Richie might have been a reality show star at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like there was no big. Re, who was the big reality stars back then? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I could be totally wrong. Yeah. I don't remember anybody being famous for just being famous 
before Paris Hilton. But yeah. she was up there by herself. Kim took that same route and but brought why, her family with her. But why did we, why, like, I understand that, but why were we looking at Paris and why were we, like, I get, I assume we looked at Paris because her, her skill, if you will, what it's not really a skill, but what she brought to the table was a lifestyle. We're like, this is a cool look into a lifestyle most people would never get to live. Being rich, being a debutante, being- I don't know why we like Paris. That That's my assumption. The same thing goes for I the can, Kardashians. Nah, it's like- nah, I can give reasons why we like Kim. Kim was fine. I, yo, but Paris was to, fine, bro. Paris to a subset of people? Nah. Very fine. Nah. I know you don't think so, but you have to understand. You that thought she was fine, bro? I thought she was okay, but Even like, when you heard about the herpes? Say again? When you heard about the herpes? She had herpes? Allegedly. Well, now I do. So now you find a more attractive? <laughs> you bug catching you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, uh, okay, before herpes, what would you rank Paris Hilton? Before you knew she had herpes and you were looking at it back in the day, what would it's you rank It's not her? my ideal girl. Okay. That being said, that modely look is obviously very popular to people because yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. models look like. Yeah. Most models don't look like Kim. You know, she did also change like body size appreciation. And, and she came in through the hood. Kim came in through hip hop, bro. Yes. Kim was on in front of King Magazine, Smooth Magazine, all of that shit like that. It was the who's this girl, Ray J banging. Like Kim came in through that urban, I hate that word, but that urban scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why you hate that word? I just, it's it's, stu it's a, actually a, that, that word is so outdated and it's like so played out like because we're afraid to say black you said we're afraid to say black and now but black. now but now you got white people moving into urban areas god forbid brooklyn all of gentrified places in brooklyn yeah those are urban areas like you can go on these websites now and you're like find a new chic a condo in an urban area yeah, it's yeah, like you know what yeah, i mean yeah, like yeah, urban yeah, means yeah. something different but now. aren't i urban cuz i grew up in the city she's sending me pictures of uh, of so Ooh. I am urban. Ooh. Paris. Paris. But was she, famous she was famous tape. before the sex tape. She, her fucking daddy is a billionaire. A uh, granddaddy Yo, or something. Al, Al was going to say something. What? They were the first. Ah. Come here, Alex. So, come say that. So Paris lifted the curtain of the New York party scene. LA and like, party scene. No, Paris Hilton, I thought. I Paris. thought Hilton lifted New York. I thought Paris was in L.A. Ah, so Paris lifted the L.A. party scene. So prior to that, the L.A. party scene was like, we're in the hills, we're isolated, it's a secret thing, this is how rich people yeah, hang yeah, out, but yeah, nobody yeah. can see it. And then all of a sudden, she exposed that. And the only like view that we had of that lifestyle prior was like those pictures in People magazine, blah, 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 walking out of this club, and all of a sudden, we're fucking in it. Yeah. So we are... This is the same reason why people love the royals. You know how, like, in, in Europe, like, people are obsessed with the royal family? We don't really get it as much here because we have, like, celebs. But the royals have never done anything, right? They're no different than Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian. They don't have any, a skill, right? They just kind of exist. They come exist. from something. They come they from come from something. something. Even Kim came from something. That's Robert Kardashian's daughter. Robert represented OJ. Boom. It's a backstory there. Chloe so might be OJ's daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Dude, a backstory. Yeah, there. it's yeah, exciting. It's a, it's a backstory there. Yeah, yeah. Nicole and Chris were cool. Like the family split apart because Robert was representing OJ and Kristen felt like they did. Like it was. It's a backstory there. Huh. And once you realize that, once you realize this girl getting back shots from Ray J had a backstory, you're like, oh shit. Perfect it's, it's recipe. Something. Absolutely. And Paris couldn't keep up. Paris didn't have the backstory. She didn't have a. It's like, it well, was her boring. Granddaddy or whatever owns the Hilton Hotel. Billionaire. Boring. So what? We don't give a fuck. Like Kim, Kim, Chris, Kim had a backstory, and when she got on the hill, she brought her people with her. So even if, even if our attention, Paris is DC, Kim is, Kim Marvel. is Marvel. Because even if our attention, imagine if we'd have got tired. Of, we'd have instead of Joker, we need Jenner. Exactly. But imagine we, we probably would have got tired of Kim if Kim was by herself. You understand what I'm saying? So she changed it up enough to uh, keep things going. Boom. She brought her family along. You're like, now you got to pay attention to all of these different people. You got to pay attention to Courtney and Chloe. And Chloe's dating basketball players. And Courtney got this crazy ass husband named Scott. And, you know, her, the, the father in law, Bruce, is Olympic champion, but now he wants to be a woman. And, and like, it's just a lot there. Like, it doesn't stop. It's all these different storylines over and over and over and over and over. Huh. Then yeah, now you got a whole new generation. You got Chris and you got Kylie. Now you got the nieces and the nephews. And but they all North. involve the same thing, right? They all involve access into a lifestyle most people don't get to see. So that's yes. what it is. If you don't have a skill, just have a lifestyle. Like, I think there's, there's probably, you know, like, I wonder if there's people... You know these like rappers that have like all the face tattoos and shit, and we don't really know them. They're like on SoundCloud and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you're kind of fascinated with them because you're like, what the fuck do you do all day? 
You got face tattoos? You see, you're not like you have a regular job. Yeah. You're rapping, so it's not. Hopefully, you're not like selling drugs. Like, what is going on? You're curious. It's a lifestyle. It's like a white person watching Good Times. It's like a white person watching The Wire. Yeah. That's what I would watch it for. Yeah. The Sopranos. I never watched. Absolutely. Because I, I got it. It was too close. Absolutely. I've seen that. Absolutely. But Absolutely. The Wire. It was like, how do I get invested in Absolutely. this thing? Absolutely. But if if somebody's from the hood or from the street, you may not appreciate The Wire the same. Because it's too familiar. It's too fucking And you call out the fake shit. You're like, ah, oh, that could never happen. Absolutely. The same way people do power now. <laughs> I watch power and I'm like, get the fuck out of here, yo. I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers talk on the phone about <laughs> crime way too much to be getting motherfucking trailed by the feds. By the way, I hate power. Go, go, I go. I love it so much. I love it, but I hate it so much. Power is the only show where I absolutely positively root for the white person all the time. Yeah, you were saying this. Yeah, I yeah, root yeah. for Tommy so fucking much. I hate the St. Patrick's. Why? Because they are just so stupid. How's, like, Ghost yeah. will call Tommy and be like, yo, Tommy, you fucking killed him? You murdered him at the club at, at such and such time p.m.? I'm like, what happened to feds tapping phones? <laughs> like, for real? Like, what? Like the shit makes no sense. Tommy drove around in this blue muscle car forever. Yeah, yeah. And nobody ever saw the car. This big, bright blue muscle car was at the scene of every crime. Yeah. And nobody ever paid it no fucking attention, bro. Like, yo, the other day, they busted the warehouse, right? They busted the fucking warehouse, right? Yeah. So they arresting Tommy's henchmen. Yeah. It's broad daylight. Tommy's, like, behind the gate, behind the tires, looking at them. And the police don't see him, but his henchmen see him. And the henchmen are talking loud and shit like... That motherfucker, that motherfucker got us, set us up and sitting there watching it. We're going to get that motherfucker. And all you hear the police say, yeah, 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 come on. <laughs> I'm like, power, come on, man. At least be a little real. Just try to be a little realistic, bro. That makes sense to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> white privilege. But it's entertaining. If you're white, I'm you not going to lie. Right. If I committed a crime and then I walked away and the police came and arrested whoever's there, I'd stand and watch. <laughs> Yeah, you just hide behind some things. If they he look was over, in plain sight. Yeah. You just go get them, officer, <laughs> and then they believe you. Get them, arrest them, arrest these bad what guys. What are they doing in this warehouse with all these drugs? <laughs> They're ruining the neighborhood. Listen, they bring it down the neighborhood. These guys. Was it? Wait, does Tommy have white guys working for him? No. no. So he employs black people. You gotta support Tommy, man. <laughs> he's supporting black business. He's hiring black. He is the Tyler Perry of power. <laughs> he is. Dude, Tyler Perry, Perry has two white names. <laughs> Tyler and Perry. If that isn't Tommy the whitest, Perry. it's Tommy Perry. Listen. But Dude, I, for the longest, I thought Ghost was the white guy. I thought that was like their name for him. No. I'm so sick of Ghost. I can't. I never I want, watched the show. I want Ghost to die. I actually want all the St. Patrick's to die. Every single one of them. Tasha, Tommy, Tariq. By the way, it's a great show. But yeah. you know why it's a great show? It's a great show, but you have to approach it. Because you're affected by it, dude. That's how you know it's good. But it you gets in you, dude. approach it as a show. Say again? It's just a show. It's entertainment. You got to tell yourself this because you're so invested. Exactly. Because I'm mad at Texting 50, you text 5th, like, yo, what the fuck? No, nah, I just be sitting there looking at like, yo, this shit is so unreal. It's, the phone <laughs> shit kills me. Like, and they do the most obvious shit. Oh, uh, Tommy. Tommy found out that somebody's going to snitch on him. Then the person gets all, mysteriously ends up dead. Yeah. Then the police come in, they're like, I know you killed this person, right? If the police wanted to get Tommy, all they had to do was say, hey, this person's about to set you up. This person's going to snitch on you. Oh, word. And then just stay at the person's house. <laughs> Tommy's coming. <laughs> like, he's fucking coming. I really can't wait to see how this shit ends. I'm going to be honest with you. I cannot wait to see how Power wraps all of this shit the fuck up, yo. What do you think the key is, and there are a few shows that have done this, what do you think the key is to engaging the black TV viewer? Because every once in a while, one of these or a couple of these shows pop up and they get black Twitter talking, they get black people talking, and it becomes this thing that's like ubiquitous with black culture, almost to the point where you could just go the next day and go, yo, power was crazy last night. And you know that the black person you're talking to has watched the show. It's actually racist, though. What is? Like when you walk, if you walk up to a black person and be like, yo, you watch power? Yo, but if <laughs> they, they do that with Empire. But if they did it, <laughs> they used to do that shit with Empire. All no, no, time. white people do. Random it. white people be like, yo, uh, what do you think of cookie? <laughs> like what? <laughs> Fuck, is you talking about cookies? Yeah, but you gotta understand, no white people watch it, so they're so excited to talk to someone about no, it. No, I think that's. I think it's the opposite. I think mad white people watch it for the same reasons we said voyeuristic. Yeah, I they think, didn't know that word. I think. I think Empire exists like that. I think power is still power. Yeah, power is not operating as, in a black vacuum. Not as, 
big and broad. Yeah, yeah. But that's because Empire was on Fox. Of course. So, so what's the what do you think the key is? Right? Because we know. saw it happen with Insecure. Right? Still happens with Insecure. Still I, happens I, I with know insecure. why it happens with Insecure. Insecure is an easy call. Insecure happens because it's a show starring black women. So um, black women get back and support women it. love it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it has a lot of storylines that black women can relate to. Um, it, it, just, it pulls on the hot screens of black women. It's a, it's, a, it's a show for black women by black women. That's all. That's it. That's an easy call. Okay, fine. Power, um, I don't know, man. Power's an interesting one because when Power first started, it didn't have any, like, it wasn't A-list talent on Power. Amari Hardwick's not an A-list talent. Natalia right. Houghton's not an A-list talent. Um, Tommy Joseph Shakur definitely wasn't an A-list talent. Like, I didn't, like, Lala's not an A-list. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as the acting world is concerned, they're not A-list talents. Right. 50, maybe it, was, maybe it was the allure of 50 and 50 having a TV show. That's a big deal to me. You know, especially somebody that produces TV and, you know, you know how hard it is to get something on the air. Like, yep. like for him to present a concept and actually get it on TV, that, yeah. was, the, that was the initial draw for me. Yeah. And it was good. I mean, I, I don't... I don't the, Al, Al said... Oh, Euphoria is amazing. I didn't watch Euphoria for Drake, though. I had no idea that Drake had anything to do with Yeah, Euphoria. but I don't know if Euphoria is targeting a black audience. I don't think it is. It's not. What were you going to say, Al? I'm down. Everybody can relate. You're saying that's why black people watch it? No. <laughs> I was like, that's you your hot take, like, bro? How can you be dressed like Killmonger and say some shit like that? Yeah, you're supposed like to be the wokest, bro. Dumb it down and then add drama to it. I don't think Powell's dumbed down, though. What? I, I haven't seen... <laughs> I don't think Powell's dumbed down. <laughs> You like, just said how all that stuff is stupid. I mean, it's I mean th that shit is stupid, but I don't think it's a I don't think it's a dumbed down show. Like, what's a dumbed down show to me? What show is just like dumbed down? I don't know. I'm really a snob when it comes to television I, shows. I think man. the same thing that hooks black people is the same thing that hooks everybody. Because mm -hmm. there's certain shows that hook everybody. Game of Thrones hooked everybody. It did. You know what I'm and saying? And those shows became ubiquitous. Black, white, everybody was Absolutely. watching it. Absolutely. Breaking Bad. I think everybody Breaking watched Bad, Breaking Bad. Walking Dead. Walking Dead was it, it, it was there, it but not like there. Everybody, it seemed like everybody I knew was watching Walking Dead. Black and white. Fair, but this this power and every Coffee once in a while show. these shows pop off where it's like so targeted and specific. And I'm just curious as to what the mechanism is that makes that happen. Because if you could identify that mechanism, Charlotte is a guy who likes to produce television. That'd be a valuable asset. I think the thing is, man, you just got to tell stories that haven't been told to, to the point we was making earlier. Um, only because I know I'm the type of person I do like to go into other worlds. I So maybe that's it with power. Yes. Maybe power, is, maybe it's the world. Maybe the world is something, because we've seen all type of street shows before, Right. right? Power is a different kind of street show. Like, like Top Boy is... The first time I saw Top Boy, I wasn't blown away by Top Boy. But I enjoyed Top Boy yeah. because I never saw that world. Yeah. I haven't seen the new the new uh, iteration of you it. You should watch the new one. I heard this it's This guy, Kano, he's a rapper. He plays Sully. Mm -hmm. I know Kano. Krypton Kano. Yeah. And um, the guy who plays opposite him, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. I forget his name. But they are brilliant, man. I'm talking about, I couldn't believe this guy started as a rapper. That's how good he was at acting. I'm talking about like emotional scenes, not, yo, I'm going to be a gangster. Like if you're, if you're a gangster rapper and yeah. someone says, yo, can you be gangster in that scene? It's like, yeah, you've been pretending to be gangster on fucking camera for your career. Like, yeah. of course, this guy's doing emotionally traumatic scenes and murdering it. Killing it. Dude, it, it the season is great, I I, and I it. started the old one, and I didn't like it that much. But this last season, I um was really fucking good. I didn't dislike the old one. I actually enjoyed it, but it was because of the world. You understand what I'm saying? Like it, there wasn't enough guns for me in the old one. But it's the London. That's the thing. It's like we're that's not the gonna. Of it. Yeah, but like I, I'm not gonna watch a gangster show where it's like, can we share the gun? But that's the dope part of it. Like I, <laughs> I actually enjoyed that because think about it. One person with a gun in London, yeah. run shit. Yeah, in the land of the blind, the man with one eye is king. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'll give his little tutu. <laughs> like, you, you running everything you got. I just, I just enjoyed it. And it was quick. It was only, I think it was four episodes a season. How many episodes on this one? This one was eight out, eight or ten. It, it was eight episodes. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm gonna do this weekend. I'm home this weekend. Yo, just I'm download binge it. Watch Top Boy. Yeah, I'm home. I'm home. I, I've been having been home in the past few weekends. I am absolutely binge watching Top Boy this weekend. Get it in, dude. It's really good. The acting is good. They're in Jamaica for part of it. They're like mixing different worlds. And Drake's the EP of that. And Drake, yeah, Drake's EP. And he's, he's the EP of Euphoria, too. Yeah, Drake is making money, man. Drake is attaching himself to some good shit, bro. 
I'm not gonna lie to you. I love Euphoria. By the way, I haven't watched Euphoria, but I, I, oh. I kind of have. Oh. I kind of have an issue with Euphoria. Why? And I and I, it's classic Schultz issue. Meaning, I'm gonna have an issue with it without ever watching it. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> you would enjoy it, bro. I'm sure. Okay, I might enjoy it. So, Game of Thrones comes out, right? And the crux of Game of Thrones really is like everything that we're morally detested by is going to be in the movie. It is going to be in the show, right? Murder, incest, rape, uh, pedophilia, like all the worst things is Game of Thrones, right? We're going to fuck each other, you know, kids, brothers and sisters hanging together. So HBO is like, okay, we know what people like. We can't just give them the exact same thing in a Game of Thrones world. How can we give them that shit that is like porn, like porn titles, but in a digestible show? So now there's this high school show where you're essentially watching high school kids hook up, right? Now, if that was porn, you'd go to prison for it. But because it's happening in a TV show, you're not going to prison. But you're watching high school kids hook up. Yeah, but it's not just that. It's, 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 it's. Think about how we look at this generation. But isn't there something to that? Or aren't I onto it a little bit? Like, if you watch the 15-year-old and 16-year-old have sex on on a video, you're going to prison for child porn. But if you watch them do it on HBO, it's art. Well, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be something like weird about that, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like a yeah, safe yeah. way for us to watch teens bang. No, I get what you're saying. Um... But it's the world, though. Like, I got I to gotta see it. Think about how like, we look at these kids and we're like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, You got transgenders on the show. Right. You got, you know, uh, the, the guy who's battling his sexuality. You don't know whether he like men or women. And right. You can see how he treats women because of it. And then like his father's a fucking pedophile. His father's a pedophile and he's gay. You know what I'm saying? So he's Whoa. teaching both young boys and girls. So you see how that is passed on to the generation because his son is confused about his sexuality and shit and his son is abusive towards his girlfriend because he's oh man the shit is good bro I'm not gonna front you for Zendaya's character is a drug addict and she's in and out of rehab and how that affects her family Euphoria is good man I'm not you, gonna front That's you see a good what I'm saying show. like look at all the things you described it's just like let's just take the worst things that happen to people make them happen to teenagers so the drama's even higher and then we it's got a H- show it's HBO but I mean actually I think a lot of that shit is really happening though it is. We know it is. It does happen. Yeah, it's yeah, fucked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, The shit is really... I mean, I don't... Like, I would be... High school would absolutely scam me. Like, they got the one, the one episode right. with a girl. She gave head for the first time or fuck for the first time and the guys taped it. Bro. The first time she ever popped that pussy for a goon. She's a porn star? Oh, no. She started selling sex later on in the show. You, you, I mean, Dude, and she's fat. People don't realize that... that- <laughs> No, she is. Because it's, a, it's, the, it's the added element to it is that she's a fat woman with confidence. That's what I, that's what I get from it. Like It's the fact that she was fat and she felt insecure about herself. But then when she started giving up that poom poom. She felt good. Yeah, and then now she's masturbating with guys on camera and they're all into her and it's boosting her confidence and her self-esteem up. The show is good, bro. I'm not going to lie. Does, where does it take place? I don't know where the fuck you for. Is it in L.A.? Is it, I, I don't know. I... Dude, there. People don't realize how quick these kids grow up, man. Like, I remember when I was in middle school, and these kids are way more advanced than us. When I was in middle school, there was a girl. And this is so sad. She would give head to guys during lunch, multiple guys. There was a little park, and they would go to this park that was by the school, and then she would just blow guys during lunch. Where is she? Probably in the park. Oh, no, what I mean by that is you don't never think about where those women <laughs> yes, are. Yes, dude. Those You're like, what like the that fuck? Are. Like, where are they now? Like, what happens to that whole life? When you live a life like that, when you just out here wilding at such a young age, where are they? I think about, I, I, matter of fact, I know some people. Like, it was this one dude who used to bring 40 ounces of liquor to school every day. 40 ounces of beer in middle school. It's like 7th, 8th grade. So, like, from 7th, 8th grade, he would all be bringing 40 ounces. We all get drunk, yada, yada, yada. It's like, he's dead now. He died in prison. So it's just like at that he was doing that type of BS at an early age. Mm-hmm. Clearly, it never stopped, and it led to him dying in a prison cell. How old are your daughters? Eleven, four, and one. Okay, so you got an eleven-year-old daughter. She's in middle school, going into high school in a couple of years. You're watching Euphoria. Are you freaking and, the fuck and, out? Anxiety attacks through the fucking homeschool. roof. Homeschool. You gotta go homeschool through the fucking roof. And my daughter goes to school with a majority of white kids too. Like, they fuck do all this that, shit. That do all of that bullshit. Let me tell you, my private school friends were way crazier than us. 
maybe we smoke a little weed. Well, I didn't smoke weed, but my friends smoke a little weed, you know, hang out, drink, you know, 40 on a stoop or some shit. My private school friends, they're doing fucking coke. The girls were going crazy. Their parents were never fucking home. They just have these big apartments in New York City all by themselves. It, it was an issue. All yeah. end up in rehabs and yeah. shit. You, you gotta be cause it's not about your daughter it's about the people that are around I will say this that is true I will say though um, I think about like my wife right me and my wife have been together since high school when I think about the freedom my wife's parents gave her it's unfucking believable mm. like 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 she I mean since she was like 16 years old she was driving like she would do whatever the fuck she wanted to do yeah like she could literally just be like oh, I'm staying at a friend's house tonight yeah and nobody would check <laughs> like she, and real you know talk, what I'm that shouldn't like, have worked out. No, because you should be in jail. Why? Well, you used to do you know drugs and sell drugs. I don't get it. Well, people who sell drugs go to jail. Oh yeah, yeah. You're I the anomaly. I did go to jail though. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But, but <laughs> <laughs> I did go to jail. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not like like it, it, one way to look back at this story is like, well, she had all this freedom, and then she ended up meeting this great guy, and they have this beautiful well, I family. Was, no, I was. You were I, the anomaly, bro. I, no, I was. What you just said when you said they hanging around the wrong people. When I was when we was a young, her father used to hate her being around me. Reasonable. He, he knew where she was probably hanging out at, which yeah. was in the trap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He knew I was probably riding around with drugs and guns, which I was. You know what I'm saying? Like he absolutely was right. Everything that we're saying right now is hundred percent true. It just worked out for us. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying all that to say when it comes to my wife, I think about that with my daughters. How strict is too strict? Because she got the freedom she wanted. So by the time she was in college, none of that shit was like foreign to her. It's not like she didn't get to do what the fuck she wanted to do. So she was able to focus and graduate and get her degree. And, you know, she, so it's she's a, gamble. a great woman. It's like you give them the freedom early on and they know what to do with it later. But the freedom early on is when they're easily manipulatable. And uh, what, Taylor? Okay. They're easily manipulatable. And then somebody can get in their heads. You know, I got tons of freedom as a kid. Yeah, it yeah, worked yeah, yeah. splendidly for me. I never even really did drugs. To this day, I don't really. I mean, I drank maybe a little bit, but like... Why do you think that is? Did you see people fucked up? For As a kid, I really didn't want to let my parents down. I don't know why I had that feeling. I don't know why it was parents. inside me. That's not supposed to be. Yeah, but you know how some people hate their parents, right? There are some people that will date a guy specifically to piss their fucking dad off. Paige. Paige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Paige did. Paige dated a black guy in school. Yes, yeah, she did. She took a black guy to the prom just to piss her daddy off. Boom. This happens all the time. So I don't know where we were, why we were talking about this. Because you said oh, yeah. you got a lot of freedom. But no, but I wanted to like I wanted to make my parents proud. And when I didn't make them proud, I was fucking embarrassed. Like I remember once I was, I, I had like a sweater on in school and I had a, some scissors and I cut the sweater and I felt this immense guilt. I went home and like told my mom, Hey, I cut this sweater that you gave me. I don't know why the fuck that was in me, but if you could figure out what the fuck that is and how to get that in your kid, you don't have to worry about your kid fucking up. Yeah. Um, oh, I, um. Grew up in a white neighborhood. For the yeah, gonna hit your intro music. And Where the fucking boy? <laughs> 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 You're not gonna hit your intro music. Hold on, hold on. You gotta get your intro right. Get your intro right. Get your intro right. Hey, stay property. Stay property. Hey, 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 hey. So, um, when I was um growing up, I'm like you though. I was scared to get like do something that for like my parents be disappointed in me yeah but i think with my parents they kind of like by accident like will put it in my head like you know i worked hard for you <laughs> like don't fuck it up ah like, <laughs> they guilted you into it not in a weird way though like i know i was very aware of how like my dad lived especially seeing how his um his siblings were and stuff like that and how he was able to like bring us to a better Life. neighborhood and stuff like that. Yeah. So I didn't want to like disappoint him in that You way. felt the responsibility yeah. to not, yeah. As, as, as all kids should feel. I didn't feel that at all. <laughs> really? No, I didn't. I, I didn't feel that way at all. I don't know what the fuck it was. Like maybe I saw how hard they worked. And then maybe, maybe it was the hard work or maybe it was like, you know what I used to like as a kid? This was weird. I used to like the reviews I would get when I would like stay at a friend's house. <laughs> like, like my parents would, would be like, oh, Derek's mom and dad said you were just so well behaved and so polite and that kind of stuff. And it made me happy to think that my parents 
raise me well. Yeah, I never got I don't know why. I never got any of that because um like my father was in and out of rehab and stuff like that. So like that reinforcement, those affirmations you should get from your father, you didn't get. And then I think about my mom. My mom was busy raising my two younger brothers and sisters right. uh, and trying to just keep my head on straight and dealing with my dad's bullshit. So she never had the opportunity to give me those kind of affirmations either. So all my affirmations came from the streets. So that's it. So you got to fucking... I guess you have to. I yeah, like, I you like have that to compliment your class. kids. Yeah, I like that laugh from the class. I like I like when the class is laughing at you. I like when the class is happy to see you. I like when, you know, you pull up in that, you got a little Lumina caravan and people are happy to see you because they need a ride to the fucking store. Like, I like that. That's the affirmation I was getting. But I do agree with you. You have to compliment your kids. Like, you, you, all, your, all your kids' affirmations have to come from you. That's what I really, truly feel. Yes, because if they Especially don't come you from you, they're going to come from someone else. And the last 100%. thing you want is some guy being the one that validates your daughter and not you. 100%. Especially with a girl. 100%. And I, but I see, I mean, it's little things that I even notice. Like my, my daughter's 11, my other daughter's four. Both of them constantly ask for my validation. And I didn't realize this uh -huh. until recently, which is so weird. Because I'm always giving them affirmations and, you know, telling them, I, I always say, I see God in you. That's what I say to my daughters. I see yeah, God yeah, in yeah, you, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But... If I don't say something, they ask, Daddy, do you like this? Daddy, would you like this? What do you think of this? We like this? You like this? So it's, it's, they want that. Yes. So I'm going to constantly always give it to them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like they never going to have to seek that from anybody else. Thank God. Yeah. And you got to put that, that's how you, that's how I think you put self esteem in a person. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Like I, I think that's how you, how you keep a person secure. Hmm. You know? By constantly affirming them? Absolutely. Constantly giving them positive affirmations. That's I, I don't know if I agree. I don't know if I agree with that entirely. Tell me why. I think that if you only give positive affirmation, they don't trust that it's real. Well, you got to know how to give the negative. Like, no, no, no. I'm not, I don't want to call it negative affirmation because you don't even want to give somebody a negative affirmation. But you got to know how to tell your child about the negative. Like, I told you about the time when, you know, my daughter was running track. Right? Oh, yeah, and you were like, that was trash. I was like, yo, that was trash. Like, she did yeah. the long jump. She had never done the long jump before. Yeah, yeah. And she did it. And I'm like, yo, that was hard. And she just burst into tears. Yeah, yeah. And that shit, oh, my God. Like, that shit broke my heart. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. My wife was telling me, like, you, you can't talk to her like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's you, not one of your little friends. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got to <laughs> approach her and you got to tell her what it is she did wrong. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's just like when I had that different conversation with her, like, look, you're better than this. I see you run faster around the house. Like, you can dust everybody out here. You just have to really focus and just do it just run your race like stop worrying about what everybody's doing in other lanes stop worrying about people looking at you just go busting ass ever since yeah 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 yeah. busting ass ever since because i gave her that confidence you know what i'm right. saying and even when she doesn't when she when she loses i'm like yo you did your best yeah and that's what i asked i don't want you i don't care if you win i just want you to do your best hmm. and that's what she's been going out there and doing ever since yeah and it's worked but there has to be times where you are critical um, if it's truthful, I just feel yeah, like you yeah, can, yeah. It's a, but it's just a I, way you to can do lose it. the value of the validation. Like I think there's, I think there's a reason why why we crave our father's validation more so than our mothers. Because mothers are always telling you everything's great. Yes, mother is the pastor. Mother is the pastor that when you die, they get you into heaven, even if you fucking watch child porn and kill twenty people. Yep. Nah, dude, it is true. What's not true. She Your mom didn't you. do that shit for you. <laughs> yeah, you can't look at them. You can't, you I didn't can't. want nothing to breathe on them because I'm gonna eat one of them motherfuckers. This <laughs> shit is calling me. I'm like, what the fuck, man? But do, do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's. I don't worry about getting pregnant still because of my mom. She was a more scarier one. No, no, that's fair. That's fair about scary. But what, I guess what I'm trying to say is like. You know, you hear you hear all these stories about girls who ended up being like strippers or hookers or these types of things, yeah. right? And none of them have a dad. They have this yeah, horrible yeah, relationship yeah, with yeah. their dad, this kind of shit. Like, I don't know any guy who's like a Chippendales dancer because his mom wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> right though? Isn't there something nah, to that? There's something to that. So it's like, I, I just feel like we know, we come out of our mothers, right? Like, we literally come out of their bodies. They can't not love us. I have... My mom literally just told me, bro, what, what? maybe last month, maybe what? two months ago, what? my mom said to me, you are not that little boy still trying to impress your father anymore. Because I know for Isn't a that... fact, all I've ever wanted was my daddy's respect. Isn't all that... I've ever wanted him to tell me was I was doing a good job. All I wanted was affirmations from my pops. 
Bro. And when I was young, I did not get that. When I was young, he would compare me to my other cousins who played football because I was getting in trouble. I was always, right. you know, class clown <laughs> fighting and shit. I was in high yeah. school. I know he could play football. He used to yeah. be like, you don't want to be, you don't want to play football like your cousin Mal or, you know, you, this person, that person. Yeah, and yeah. he just used to always compare me to people. And that shit did nothing <laughs> but fucking ruin my Destroy self-esteem. Destroy you. Yes. Right. Like, I'm not going to ever be good enough for this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, it, it, I, I, and I, I've, and I, throughout my whole life, I've always wanted that. And I remember she, she literally told me, she was like, you are not the same little boy that has the need, feels the need to impress his father. And Bro. you don't realize how much that shit fucks you till you get older. Till you get older. I'm in therapy <laughs> crying my ass off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why does he love me? No, no, I actually said, I actually said, the one time I, one time my, as my therapist says, a breakthrough. Yeah. The one time I cried in therapy, I was crying because I was like, yo, my dad ain't never taught me shit. All he ever fucking did was discipline me mm. Because I didn't know the shit he didn't teach me. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> this is your fault. And now I'm getting punished for it. <laughs> like, straight up. This is my, I'm getting punished Why for this shit. Why can't you throw a baseball? Because you never play catch. You teach me, motherfucker. You get a mitt. This is fuck. <laughs> you going to beat me up because I said Michael Bivens was cute? <laughs> it's your fucking fault. <laughs> I'm eight years old. I'm in a room with my goddamn sister and my two women cousins watching BBD. D fucking poison video yeah. and my sister's like oh Ronnie's the cute one my other cousin's like oh no uh, Ricky's the cute one and I'm just like I just want to be down <laughs> Michael's the cute one daddy <laughs> no I just said somebody cute what who <laughs> cute like, get, get, get outside and go play with the goddamn boy <laughs> Well, if you would have been being a fucking father, I wouldn't have to be in here with all these goddamn curls to begin with. Letting the TV babysit me. The fuck is wrong with you? That'd be really funny if he took you outside and he was like, all right, he is a cute one, but don't ever say that again. <laughs> yo, by the way, yo, I'm going to tell you something else. And I, and, and listen, I'm going to tell you something else. I'm not blaming any, I'm not, I don't blame, I don't blame my toxic masculinity on anybody else. I will take full accountability for all my toxic masculinity. But my daddy has fucked me up. I remember when, yeah, we had a menage a trois, right? Yeah, this yeah. is when I was like, I was going like real straight, meaning like yeah. my girl had just broke up with me, and we we are, we was broken up for the whole year. And I said to myself, in order to get my girl back, I got to be a better human being. Mm. I started doing youth ministry at the mosque. Mm. Like I was, I was, I was Muslim now. Like I was that, <laughs> I was that person, right? Me and my dude DJ Frosty, Frosty getting married in a couple a couple of weeks. I'm gonna be I'm uh, in his wedding, but Frosty, I hope your wife knows this story, but. uh we at Frosty's house, two girls there. We getting drunk. We having a good time, whatever, whatever. And I wasn't, I wasn't even drinking then. They forced me to drink, right? They're like, oh, you got to drink, you got to drink. I'm like, I don't want to drink. Mm -hmm. Like, no, he's, play, he's playing Uno. So he's playing Uno, and every time you lose a hand to Uno, you got to take a shot. So he's taking a shot. So I'm drunk. I'm laying on the couch. I'm in the fetal position, crying my eyes out because I'm like, oh, my God, Allah's going to punish me. I'm in here drinking, whatever, whatever. Frosty's in the room. He's getting it in with the two girls. Frosty comes out. Frosty's like, yo. Yo, they want you to come in. I'm like, no, I'm leaving. I try to leave. No, you can't go, man. Why are you leaving? What's that? I'm, leaving. I'm leaving. This girl goes, Charlamagne, bring your ass in here. And I don't want to hear none of that God body shit. Right? Long story short, menage a Only menage a I've ever had in my life. I am so down and so distraught and think Allah is going to punish me so much that I start talking. And at the time, I didn't know I dealt with anxiety. So I'm having a panic attack for like three, four days straight. And I'm talking crazy. Like, I'm going to kill myself, this and that, yada, yada, yada. Frosty them called my pops, called my mom, whatever, told, told my wife. Pops drives up an hour and a half from Monk's Corner to Columbia, comes to my apartment. He's like, what the fuck is the problem? I'm like, yo, man, I'm in, you know, not with, I'm not with my wife. It's actually not my wife, but I'm not with her right now. And, you know, I'm trying to do right. And I'm going to the, doing youth ministry at the Moss. And, you know, I, me and that Frosty house and started drinking and then, you know, had sex. And had Menazi talk. My dad goes, well, there was no guy, right? And I'm like, no, it wasn't with a fucking guy, right? And then he goes, so you two girls. You got drunk and had sex with two girls. I said, yes. And he goes, where the fuck is the liquor and the goddamn girls at? Because now I'm stressed out because of this bullshit you done put me through. <laughs> I done drove an hour and a half here and you fucking wilding over some pussy and some liquor? <laughs> now, was he right? Absolutely. Yeah. Did it bring me back down to center? Did my anxiety immediately go away? A hundred percent. 
Was that the right thing to probably tell your son <laughs> in that moment? No. Yeah, Not yeah, if he's yeah. trying to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's trying to do the right thing, it's a way to have that conversation and say, look, yeah. we all make mistakes, which he eventually did get around to doing. Right. But in that moment, he planted those seeds in me because he always used to make me feel like being with one girl was the wrong thing to do. Interesting. I remember when I confronted him about cheating on my mom. And he looked me dead in my eyes and said to me, yo, you only got one girl. <laughs> you only got one girlfriend. <laughs> one day you're going to understand. So in my mind, I'm like, yo, so it's wrong to be with one girl? Yeah. Like, I, I've been on, I really have been on my black men don't cheat shit for a long time. I've never been the type. Go ahead, Taylor. What the fuck? <laughs> I've been. <laughs> I've been on this for a long time. You know what I mean? I've never been the type of person that need to be with a bunch of different women. But my father made That's me feel... That's the first time you've complimented Taylor. It's the first one time she got something done something right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to treat you the way my dad treated me. But like, hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. But it's the truth. Like He always made me feel like the things I was doing right. that were right were wrong. Right. That right, shit right. fucked me up, bro, right. for a long time. Yeah, no, that was that, that's a really interesting thing you said before is like he used to reprimand you for the shit that he never taught you. For doing the shit that he never taught what you not boy. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is I remember one yeah. time I ran a stop sign, right? Yeah. I was following him. Yeah, yeah. He ran the stop sign first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro. That shit, that shit right there pisses me off to this day. I'm following him. He runs the stop sign. So I do what he do. He pulls over on the side of the road. He gets out the car, walks to the car, taps on when I run one line, and he smacks the shit out of me and tells me to wake the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Son, that's entrapment. That's true. Bruh. And by the way, Dude, your dad set you up, bro. <laughs> when he slaps, he just goes, "Don't trust nobody." And you know what, yo? <laughs> <laughs> yo, the wild part about that shit is, I didn't realize till like I started going to therapy. Yo, I'm I, I, 39 years old, 39 yeah. to now. Yeah, I'm in therapy, unpacking shit, crying about shit that he did to me. He don't, and, and it's so weird because I thought I loved my pops. And yeah. I do love my pops. Yeah. But boy, if therapy hasn't made me hate that mother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he don't even get it. He don't even know why sometimes. He'll yeah. call my phone, I'll answer. He texts me, I'll text back. Yeah. Because I just got out therapy thinking about some bullshit you did to me when I was a motherfucking kid. You know what I mean? But, but I love him though because he did instill a lot of good things in me. Oh, dude. But the negative outweighed the good, I think, in a lot of ways. I mean, you know what? I'm not gonna say that. Yes, I just you, I, go, I do like this. I you go wouldn't be here without it. Like exactly, you didn't have a validation matrix, right? You had nobody that was kind of affirming what you were doing, right? So you had to go get that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You go get that from your friends at school. You get that from the boys on the block, right? Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. had to develop skills to get that from the friends at schools and boys on the block because they're way harder to impress than. Absolutely. The, then your family member, or your Absolutely. mom, who's just going to love whatever you do. So you learn how to be funny. You learn how to be charismatic. Yeah. You learn how to be charming. You learn how to drop hot takes. You learn which, how to speak. Which my dad is. That's my pop. All of that is my pops. Everybody know Larry McCoy. They know Cowboy. That, that is Cowboy. He's funny. Hot takes. Like, I was literally just talking to my cousin Rel over the weekend because Rel is my dad's cousin. They're like around the same age. Funniest motherfucker you ever meet in your life. Just yeah. too old, down south. Maggot loving, they're gonna let the maggot fly. Like, yeah, that's yeah, them. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. I was just talking to them about, I was talking to Rob about, so man, remember that time when Jack Tripper died? <laughs> boy, whoo, you talk about cancel culture. <laughs> woo, boy, what? when Jack Tripper died, the conversation was, it was between my dad and my cousin Rob. Hey, I'm glad that maggot dead. Live with them, live with them women for two years, all that time, and ain't fuck nothing. <laughs> like, that was the conversation. Between those two. So that's the kind of shit I grew up in. Grew up around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, don't yeah. don't question me why I was fucked up. Yeah. You hear me making inappropriate comments to women in interviews? Like, that's where I came from. Yes. I was a fuck, came from a fucked up, toxic environment full of men. That, right. That, the toxic masculinity y'all talk about, y'all yeah. know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can, you ain't never been around it like I was. If you're around. raised by wolves, you're gonna know how to howl. You're gonna know how to fucking howl. Mm -hmm. That's it. But eventually, you know. It's not an excuse anymore. No, you but know? you got to learn it. You but gotta, you learn where it comes from. Nah, but you said the illest shit earlier. What? You get to a certain age where you start 
unlearning shit. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. I spend more time now unlearning than I did fucking learning because all of that shit that I learned did not serve me anymore. Yes. It got me to a certain point, but it yes. can't help me get to where I really, really want to go. And I'm not yes. even just talking about on a, a professional level because yeah. motherfuckers will... They love to pull up old clips of Charlemagne talking about sucking farts out of girls' yeah, yeah, butts yeah, yeah, yeah. and saying inappropriate, creepy. But I, that had to happen. Yeah, like that. I, that had to happen. Like that. Yeah. That part of my life had to happen because that's what I knew. Yes. Right. But yeah. as you start going to therapy and you start practicing mindfulness and you know, yeah. you just start embracing your sacred masculinity and divine masculinity yeah. more than more than the toxic masculinity. You, yeah. That shit don't serve you no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's just something that you have to live. And learn and then unlearn to really learn again. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. 100%. I mean, there's bad habits you have to unlearn. It just happens in sports. Mm -hmm. Hey, it takes you too long to get this pass off. Mm -hmm. Change your form a little. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are things that you do. It's just fascinating to me that, like, we have this, we all have this ingrained need for validation from our father. Like, from our parents, but definitely our but, fathers. But specifically our dad, like I went out to dinner with my f parents for my birthday the other night, right? My mom texts me after. So good to spend time with you. You should be so proud of yourself and what you've accomplished. Uh, I remember you saying it takes 10 years to learn the craft of comedy. And well, you've worked so hard and you're a success. And on the eve of your 36th birthday, uh, enjoy my darling son. Love you so much, Oof. mom and dad. And then, then she writes, he is so proud of the man you are. Oof. And me too. Nothing before that line mattered. Nothing. Once she said that line. You didn't care about your mom? <laughs> Son, nothing before. <laughs> like, my mom said the sweetest shit. The second she said, my dad is so proud of the man I have become, that was it, bro. I almost started you know why? crying, you know why? dude. You know why? Because your father was your original male superhero. <sighs> he, was the, he was the original man that you looked up to. So when those were, when the man you look up to said, I am proud of the man, You've become even Number now one, reading he, it, he's, bro. He's, he's acknowledging that you're a man. Yep, and he's proud of you, bro. Yeah, and Come I know, on, man. And there's like you know, my dad's losing his memory, so like to 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 get there before that goes, I could almost cry now. But like, it's valuable to me. Yeah, when your dad, when you grow up, when you grow up, when when you grow up with your dad, you know, constantly saying your pussy, but in so many words. Right. Right. Making you feel like a pussy, calling you a maggot. Like actually, you having a goddamn panic attack, and he asking you if you fucking other men. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a work. That's what the only thing that can cause this is good old homosexuality, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> like when when shit like that happens, uh, when that man finally acknowledges that you're a fucking man, bro. Ah, dude, Lord powerful. have mercy. I love powerful. I love the validation from my mom though. My mom. The, the two illest things my mom has told me over the past probably decade that have really helped me, even as much as therapy or anything else, when number one, she told me that, she said, she said, just be happy to be making a living. Because mm. when I first started doing The Breakfast Club and, you know, now, now she's just blown away by the numbers that I make. But back yeah. then she was like, yo, that's more than anybody in our family has ever made. Whatever. She's like, just be happy, but just be happy to be making a living. And mm -hmm. I was like, I just that was always my mindset. My mindset was always just, yeah, I'm making a living. I'm happy yeah. making a living. But when she, and then when she told me the, the, like, you know, a few weeks ago about, yo, you're not the little boy that's here to impress your dad yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two pieces of advice freed me. Yeah. Not even gonna front, they freed me. Yeah. When she said, just be happy to be making a living. She said, I'm proud of you. I just happy. I, I felt free. Yeah. And then when she said she about my pops, I felt free. And I think that's what we all want. We just want to feel free, right? Like, we just all yeah. want to be liberated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she set an expectation for happiness for you. She's like, you should be happier making a living. And, like, if that expectation is there and everything else is gravy, man, fuck, you're living in gravy. Yeah, man. If she said, everything is be gravy. happy when you're the, old, the number one show, then you'd be miserable until you're the number one show. Yeah, man. But that's the thing moms do, like, like, moms are the backbone. Does that make sense? Like moms are like, it's like, if you don't have it, you can't walk. I think moms, I think I like what Fantasia said, and I've heard this before, but I, I think moms are the neck and daddies are the head. 
the neck. The, the, the neck, yeah, the head can't do nothing without the neck. Right, right, exactly, right? So it's like the backbone of the neck. Like, it's that thing that allows you to walk, it allows you to move, right? It is the confidence that is, like, always going to be there. And you know if you fuck up, there's someone who will embrace you and help you get back on your feet, etc. And then your father is, like, the guiding light. It's the thing where it's like, oh, I'm going to go achieve that great thing because I know I'm going to get that validation from him that I, I know my mom's going to be happy. But he might really step it up. It's and like do daddies that. make you believe. <sighs> maybe you know they maybe they make you aspire. I don't know. My mom inspired me too, man. It's a it's just they a, give you a sense of security. I don't know. Maybe pops give you maybe maybe because our job is to protect and provide. Like maybe we add a sense of security. I know a lot of times people hear that word security and they mm-hmm. think financial, but nah. Sometimes security is just knowing. Oh, physical. That somebody for sure. got your back. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that somebody's gonna be there for you. Like I was talking to somebody this weekend. I was drunk. At, I was I was super drunk at the Angela Rye's birthday party and yeah. we was having a conversation about dad and I hate having those conversations when I'm drunk because I'm about to cry I, I, I will cry yeah All right. but they were talking to me about how they was on a playground and they saw a mom telling the son or the daughter come on come down slide down slide down she was like no 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 no. and then the dad got the dad was like come on you got it he was like Phew. you know what I'm saying it's just something about dad putting that battery in your back that's different yeah. than mom Cause like mom, maybe because you yeah. expect it from mom. Well, you've been dropped by your mom, not your dad. Uh, maybe it's just... <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Wait, mom's sorry. arms got all tired. She dropped you by accident. Dad just carries you no matter what. Maybe we just take women for granted. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's just a constant thing in our life. Maybe, you know, from, maybe from day no, one we you know just take women is. for granted. Your mom's going to tell you you could do anything. You know? Mm. And maybe that baby knew that. Mmm. You know, where the dad is going to come in and be like, nah, there's some repercussions I'll for tell shit. tell you the truth. Yeah. And you need yeah, that balance. Yeah, 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 You know that when your dad says, good job, it really was a good job. Because he wouldn't say it if yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dad ain't got time for that nurturing shit. That's mom's job. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to tell you something, though. We have to combine the two, though. Th- that's I, why I, they're both there. Yeah. That's why the greatest I'm, I'm, advantage in life, they say statistically. Two-parent household. That the outside yeah. of race, it literally it it removes all racial, gender, educational background. It like removes all of them. Yeah. From a success from the success standpoint. Two parent household is the key to success, man. I think I think you gotta have balance in both. I wanna read this real quick because I was I've been studying about this lately, bro. I've been studying like the sacred masculine, right? Mm-hmm. And um, like sacred masculine traits and shit. Like I'm that. gonna pay some bills while you read that. All right, I'm gonna pull it up. Go ahead. Guys, you got to do better help, actually. I know. Okay. If there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling can help. BetterHelp offers licensed professionals, counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment and get help at your own time and at your own pace. Anything you share is confidential and it's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. If for some reason you are not happy with your counselor, though you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash idiots. Now back to the show. Also. Ooh, we got another one? Yeah, dude. You know that um, this, this episode has been brought to you by Best Fiends. Best Fiends? Fiends. There's Best Fiends now? Best Fiends is out here. If you're looking you know for a fiends fun one. Crackheads? Yeah, maybe that's what this game is. Oh. Maybe it's that good. If you're looking for a fun way to pass time while engaging your brain and enjoying breathtaking visuals and a gripping story, Smoke you're- crack! <laughs> <laughs> your answer is Best Fiends. Best Fiends is a casual game anyone can play, okay? Best Fiends is a unique and exciting puzzle experience unlike other puzzle games out there. Plus, they update the game monthly with new levels and events so it never gets old. Did you hear that? The game never gets old. It's ever-changing. You're not going to beat it because it's changing. Engage your brain with fun puzzles. Collect tons of cute characters with Best Fiends. Download the five-star rated game on Apple, App Store, and Google Play for free. That's 
friends without the R. So it's Best Fiends, F-I-E-N-D-S. Go get that right now. Go play, enjoy, and we're back to the show. Yes, man. I've been studying this, right? Because I really think that we need a balance. When we talk about parents and we talk about having fathers and mothers, I feel like all of us as humans have this divine balance in us and it's when the masculine aligns with the feminine, the divine feminine, the divine masculine in all of us. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I want y'all to do your own research, but you can Google what is the divine feminine, feminine, what is the divine masculine, but it says our greatest potential as humans is met in the incorporation and balance of our internal divine masculine and feminine energies. Equally inherent to both men and women are behaviors, Thought patterns and tendencies dictate the balance of the complementing energies, right? So you got all these different qualities. Masculine qualities are this. Logic, reason, action, firmness, survival, loyal, adventurous, rational, and strength. Feminine qualities are intuition, nurturing, healing, gentle, expressive, wise, patient, emotional, flexible. Would you agree with those different traits for men and women? Sure. So what happens when you have the divine masculine and it represents a spiritual, psychological and archetypal ideal of masculine energy? Like that's when you combine all of those different traits. Yeah. That's when you become the best version of yourself. When you can combine the divine masculine with the divine feminine. And I think that's where we need to be, because I think a lot of times as men, we dismiss things we say oh that's that's what girls do uh yeah oh that's some bitch shit uh yeah oh you pussy all anything that, it's almost like anything that got to do with being a woman yeah it's negative yeah but no you need those qualities like you need to be gentle you know what i'm saying you mm. need that intuition mm. you need to be nurturing you want to experience that healing we're expressive we whether we know it or not we got a lot of divine feminine qualities you're a, you're a comedian show 100 percent. you're expressive you're wise sensitive emotional emotional and sensitive on, for man. sure we have to be sensitive to the world around us yes. so that we can react to it yes so i'm just I, I'm, I'm not that yo that's the biggest bullshit talk to me anybody in our business anybody i don't care who the fuck they are anybody in our business who goes i'm unaffected or i don't care is nonsense. Bullshit. You cannot talk every single day for a living about the world if you're unaffected or don't care. Clearly, you're these talking things you care. Thank you. Yes, because because the things I don't care about, I'm not going to talk about. Why We've would been you? Sitting here talking for an hour and twenty six minutes about things that we care about. That's why we're able to talk about it every week. Now it might be some shit you might throw in this desk that I'd be like, I'm not, I don't care five, but I won't talk about it. Exactly. Taylor, Simple Taylor as that. Got a bunch of topics here. Dude, hey. Every week, Taylor puts in hours of work getting topics done, and we take that paper and we crumble it up and we throw it in the garbage. I don't give a fuck about Halloween facts. Uh, for whatever reason, you have people who don't celebrate Halloween, Jehovah Witness, Orthodox Jews, observant Muslims. I don't give a shit about Bed Bath and Beyond removing black jack and lanterns because the complaints resemble blackface. I don't care that Jordan Peele. I care about that one. Hold on. That's the Jack one for you? Hold on, on, son. Hold on, son. Dude. Oh my God. Dude, black jack o' lanterns? Are you kidding? Black lanterns. Dude, black lanterns? Black lanterns are scared the shit out of a racist neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> or excited. <laughs> or excited. Oh, What's that hanging from a tree? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Flavor Flav fathers another child at 60. Nope. We talked about Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. Don't give a fuck. Who's going to lose their career over their Halloween costume this week? Any predictions? Anybody that does deserves to. And the reason I say anybody that does deserve so to promote it, right? It's like bro, you gotta you, know. You, you gotta dude. know what's around the corner. Like you can't play clueless anymore. You can't act like you didn't know. There's nothing you can do that will justify you wearing blackface this year. I, I, I'm trying to think what would be the most offensive shit that's not blackface. Let me think. Can't pretend to be a victim of police brutality. I've seen no stupid ass costumes. You have? Yeah, yeah. I've seen people. I, when Trayvon died that year, yes, it was bad. Everybody, it was stupid. Yeah, what has been super offensive this year? Hmm. If I wanted to offend people Mm -hmm. this year, I would um, go get me a nice little blue suit, Mm -hmm. a scarf. Mm -hmm. I would uh, put a noose around my neck. I'd get a bottle of bleach. I'd go get Kaz and another Nigerian. (laughs) And I would walk around (laughs) and act like... I just got attacked by those two Nigerians. Jesse and I'd get two Nigerians in MAGA hats. Get cast away the MAGA hat. 
I think that could piss some people off. That is a great costume. That's a good one. The only problem is you guys got to stay together the whole night. The whole <laughs> night. If you even go to the bathroom, the bathroom. by yourself. That, out of context, that shit is bad, bro. All of you. All of you Everybody, is bad. You got a noose on your neck? You got a MAGA hat on? You got on? a MAGA hat? <laughs> yeah, all, out of context, that shit is all bad, bro. What else could be offensive this year? Um, What is a good offensive costume? Which What, what you got, Al? Ooh, Epstein would be offensive. Dude, Epstein choking Epstein. himself to death? No, yeah. Right, because he Epstein. committed suicide yeah, yeah, with yeah. quotes. Epstein choking himself to death. I don't know. I can't think of nothing that's offensive. You don't know what's offensive until you see it. Yeah, you know we what I'm should saying? know an offensive costume. I'm trying to think. I can't think of nothing that would absolutely offend me, but I'm not the person that's easily offended either, though. Hmm. So you can't ask me. I, I don't I don't know. Nothing with Trump? Yeah, I don't. If, if you still letting Trump offend you, bro, like, like you shouldn't be offended at Trump. You should actually just be outraged. Meaning, like, you should be outraged that our democracy has come to this. Like, it's right. not. It's not nothing. We're past offensive. Being offensive is being offended at what Trump says in yeah. tweets means nothing anymore. Yeah. You should absolutely, absolutely be outraged about the legislation he's passing that really can fuck up. America. Forget the yeah. forget the words. Like I, I'm not offended by anything Trump says anymore. Right. Like even when everybody was tripping this week because he talked about the bad guy dying like a dog. Yo, that shit was so funny, dude. I don't see what the that shit was so. No, no. When they juxtaposed it with Obama, Obama was like a calculated attack yeah. went in. They uh, executed their strategy and eliminated the target. And then it just cuts to Trump, Trump and he goes, "He died like a dog." <laughs> First of all, I hate that. I, I, you know, I hate when people say that because they busted down the door and he died like a dog. How do dogs die? Don't they say all dogs go to heaven? I'm serious. So technically, you're saying that he died and went to heaven. Like, how do dogs die? I mean, he died like a dog. I don't. I don't understand the logic. I'm not sure, but uh, I thought it was hilarious. And uh, I don't understand why we give a fuck. I wish everybody just agreed with uh, Trump's politics, or like Trump's politics were, were agreeable with everybody, so that we could appreciate how fucking funny this guy's content is. It would be listen, Doug, the Halloween thing when he puts the candy on hilarious. top of the the minion's head. For there no is reason. a video. Where there's there are kids at the White House. One of them is in a full balloon minion costume, right? And the kid walks up to Melania and Trump, and Trump <laughs> looks at this kid in a minion and puts costume. the candy on top of his head. And puts he's got a bag for the candy, and Trump just lays it on top of his head like a yarmulke, and he just keeps he keeps going. walking. Listen, what? This shit is hilarious. You think that guy's ever gonna trick or treat people? <laughs> you know, he might. He might never have trick or treated, bro. Tricking. He did some Epstein tricking on goddamn Epstein Island. He definitely did some tricking. But motherfucking, oh, the thing about Trump is it would be hilarious yeah. if our world wasn't so fucked up. If, right. If if, if, if if what he was doing wasn't actually absolutely detrimental to our society right. and us as a people and just the world in general, right. it would be hilarious. Right. I just didn't understand. Like, I think that they... Uh, That's just still hilarious. I'm sorry, bro. I, I, I could I, compartmentalize, dude. I was dying laughing at that shit. We have, we have, we have Beto, we have Beto, Beto on the show. And, um... Oh, God. I was asking Beto... Why? I don't know. I was asking Beto. I like Beto, though. But when you're around him, can you feel the fraudulence oozing through I mean, his I, fucking... I, 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 it was one point in the interview, I was like, are you fucking pandering, bro? Yes. Because it was yes. like, it was like, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. You know, it rages me when white people pander, right? Because I'm the opposite of that white guy, right? I'm talk, like, yeah. I'm going to say the shit that might piss you off as yeah. a non white person hearing yeah. it from a white guy if you first meet me. So when I hear the white people pander, it drives me fucking crazy. It was crazy. only because he was talking about, like, not knowing about certain things like he didn't know you know he didn't know if slavery was this bad and all this other like you know but and listen he's probably right a lot of you know he's a younger guy a lot of people really don't know so i'm not gonna hold that against they don't him. know slavery was bad it, 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 he said what the they think it was he, like he said the brutality of it. working at target he said the brutality of it like uh he said he went to some museum and he saw all the african americans that got killed and this and that whatever whatever and then you never read uncle tom's cabin in school he probably didn't and so envy tried to move and i go wait a minute bro are you pandering right now? Because all of this, you just, this, this thing about reparations with you is a new thing. Like, you just started talking about this, right? And he explained, like, yo, I, I just learned about a lot of this stuff. 
Maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe he's not. I don't know. Whatever. I don't. I don't know. What did you, you ask him? Taylor was in there. Did you ask him why he calls himself Beto and not Albert, which is his real fucking name? Albert is his real name. Yeah, he's not Mexican. I didn't know he, he claimed calls to be himself Beto. Beto is short for Albert. It's oh, the Mexican version of it. I had no idea. He's Captain Pander. He uses a Mexican name because he lives. He, has, he always refers to himself as a white guy, though. Right, but he's going by Beto because he wants to get the Latino vote where he is. Oh, he I lives no in Texas. I, I, I started the interview off by saying, I'm like, bro, you know, you started off red hot. Now you're just like, eh. And what did he say to that? He took a breath. He takes a lot of deep breaths. He was, sh- you know, he's shaking. I mean, probably had a little anxiety, or whatever. You know, it's just like that shit gotta fuck with you. He was shaking a little bit. Who? Oh, Mad Peep. No, I had to fuck with him about Mad Peep. Well, well, well. Because it was just it's just simple mathematics. Which is Beto gave us like forty six minutes. Mad Peep's been there twice, giving us over an hour. Like, come on. And what'd you say? I said that to him. I was like, "Yeah, you off in a rush? I just want you to know, Mad Pete. You know." Gave us way more time than you did. All right? it's, it's, it's cool, though. It was a cool interview. I mean, I don't know why anybody would run for president, bro, at this point. If if you know, like, you're not even standing a chance of winning. Like, everybody holds on to this whole Obama theory of Yo. being in single digits and then, like, getting hot it ain't in happening. 2020. Nah. Yo, but let's go. Let's have this conversation because I think this is important. How fucking easy is it to be a politician? Like, it just dawned on me. Wait, 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 wait. Used to be. Wait for it. It just dawned on me how easy it is to be in politics. Like, Mayor Pete is a full-time mayor, right? <laughs> Beto is a full-time congressman or whatever the fuck he is. No, where I he think is. he is. No, he is. Yeah. He's a congressman? Yes. He's a congressman? Okay. Still sitting, right? Um, de Blasio was a full-time mayor of one of the of the biggest cities in the world. Full-time maybe time is debatable. Right? Well, no, no. This is what I'm trying to say. All these people are supposedly politicians, yet have time to run presidential campaigns at the exact same time. So what that tells me is being a politician or being the mayor of New York or being the mayor of fucking wherever it is, Indiana, is not a full-time job. Now, that makes a lot of sense, buddy. None of these politicians are doing fucking jack now, shit. Now, I will say this. I love the Congress. How could you possibly represent your state or your city and have a full-time presidential campaign? There are not enough hours in a day unless your original job is doing exactly fucking nothing, <laughs> which is what we've criticized politicians for doing this entire time. It's not a real job. A Elizabeth Warren, you don't point. have a real fucking job. Any of these people running, you don't have a real fucking job. That's you do point. jack shit. That's why nothing gets done because you don't do shit. And when you That's run for point. president, all of a sudden you have another, uh, what, another 40 hours extra just pops up in a week? That's a great point. That's they a, don't do shit. That's a great point. And, and, they, and they, they throw a lot of things against the wall to see what sticks. I told Beto today, I said, bro, you don't seem like you have a clear cut campaign strategy. It's just like your campaign strategy is all over the place. I said, what is your messaging? I'm like, what, what, what? When I think about Beto, other than the word fuck, did what he do say I that? Think about? <laughs> when did he say it? When he was he thinking about his campaign? Yeah, that's, that's his thing. He's known as the guy who says fuck. Well, if I had his numbers, I'd say fuck a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> he said fuck in, re- in regards to the gun issue. The gun the issue. shooting, but he was saying that before that. He used to uh, curse he, before that. He cursed out a reporter. He cursed out a reporter. I saw that. I think. He talked about that. I saw oh, that. stop trying I, I to be I edgy, Beto. I don't dis. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't dislike Beto. I just think that it's a place for everybody, and I think Beto's place should be in the Senate. Huh? I said I don't dislike Beto. I just think everybody. It's a place for everybody, and I think right now Beto would be better served in the Senate. He, he lost. Lose, but I mean, he can. He, still, he, he ran against Ted. He Cruz. ran against Ted Cruz, yeah. but he can, he can. He can focus on running again. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think he's better served in that. That that capacity. Stop I think, I think Mayor Pete right fucks, now is better man. served in that capacity. Is being in the Congress, being Say, Congress. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing I'm realizing. Right. These guys are running for. These guys are running for president, and when you run for president, you're actually campaigning for whatever other position you want. Because you become so famous yeah, when you run for president that you're actually yeah. campaigning for your gov- gubernatorial race, yeah. your Congress race, et cetera. So they're not, they, Mayor Pete knows he's not going to be president. Yeah, he's a star, bro. He, yeah, but, he, but he's like, you know what I could be? I could be governor of Indiana. Yeah. You know what I could be? Congressman, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So they're all playing. And that's the thing that's such bullshit is they know they're not going to win. They're telling you that they're trying to win, which is a lie because they're going for another political position. Yeah. It's a bunch of fucking liars. Listen, well, the field except is, Bernie, well, he's the only one uh, who's not, who is who is the one who's. Uh, do you don't think he's telling the truth? I truly believe he's I telling the truth. I think Bernie's telling the truth. That's my problem with Bernie. Why? <laughs> because he's telling the fucking truth, and he does not have a clear cut black agenda. 
I, is, I'm voting my interest in 2020. And what if he was just like, you know what? I don't have a black agenda. I got an American agenda and I care about poor people. And you know what? There's some black poor people that are going to benefit and the rich would, black I people would, ain't going to benefit. I would love that. I, listen, I have no problem with a rising tide lifting all boats if somebody would actually fix the hole that's in black people's boat. But our boat doesn't rise when that fucking tide rises. Like, it, history has shown that. Like, right. even when Bernie talks and Bernie says he wants to help poor and disenfranchised workers, it's going to be poor white workers that get the benefits of those things first. Well, I think they're going to be poor black workers to get it now because you don't have the systemic oppression in place that, like... Uh, Eliminated those benefits from blacks of the past. Well, you got to fix that. Nobody's first of all. Well, America, they did fix it. Like America sis- has to acknowledge that they have to apologize well, for it, and they have to do something to right that wrong that happened. Sure, but legislatively, there's no law out there that is oppressive to black people. There's no law that's written. Hey, this is against black people. Yeah, you had you had gerrymandering. You had the the, the, the but the, both sides do that, and that's a political thing, right? Yeah, it's but that like, shit affects us more. It, it, the be, 88 crack laws definitely affected no, no, black people no, no, more. I understand. 94 crime bill definitely affected. I understand. Black I understand. More. Those things affect certain communities more. Like, for yes. example, uh, when the drug acid has the same, like catching somebody who's on the on the drug acid and they have the same uh, you know prison sentences as crack, right? That greatly affects acid users, which are 99% white people, right? But the law is against acid, not against white people well, that are hippies. Well, that's a good point. You see what I'm saying? Brought up drugs. Look at opioid epidemic. Now they talking about rehabilitation. Right. Back then you had Joe Biden on the Senate floor saying, I don't care about the environment that created these predators and are causing them to do these things. Lock them up. Right. 88 crack laws. You get more time for fucking crack cocaine than you do powdered cocaine. Right. Why? Because in the hood, people were selling crack to get ahead. Right. Like that's systemic shit that they did right. to motherfucking and, keep their foot on it. And the same and the same thing they did with meth, right? It's like meth has elevated levels of uh, you know, incarceration compared to ADHD drugs like Adderall when it's the exact same thing. So it's like the poor people, the poor whites that are doing meth instead of just snorting HD uh was it Adderall like the rich whites get way more jail time just like the rich whites that do cocaine get way less jail time than the poor blacks that do crack, right? So clearly all these things also have The rich whites that do what? Uh the rich whites do coke are getting way less jail time than oh, yeah, the poor yeah, blacks absolutely. that do crack, right? So, like, race plays a role in absolutely everything. Nobody's denying the racial role, but there's also an economic role, right? And but, that, but, but, but the race part kept the economic part from ever happening for black people. 100%. And I think what happened is there were way more strict laws that were in place that were directly affecting black people, right? Absolutely. Like, racist-ass laws. And as far as I'm concerned, we've removed the racist laws themselves. There's still laws that affect black people disproportionately to white people. What were, ra- what were the exact racist laws? I mean, hey, black people, you're not going to get bank loans. Yeah. Hey, hey, black people, do you want to build wealth like we build wealth in this com- in this country? Yes. Well, too bad. We're not going to give well, you, we're not going to give you loans. I, I encourage everybody to read a book called um, Order to Kill by William Pepper. And it tells you why they really killed Martin Luther King Jr. You said segregation. That's the first thing you said. They didn't give a fuck about civil rights and civil liberties. They don't want them poor people coming up. That's it. They give you that. Why do you think they gave Bernie a heart attack? I- <laughs> son, they just brought back the Popeye sandwich. They trying to kill him. They really trying to they kill know, Bernie, son. They know when you're on that campaign trail and you got a lot of black surrogates around you, you're going to get hungry. And what they going to bring you? is very convenient. It's open on Sundays. Chick-fil-A not going to get you on the Lord's Day, but Popeye will. You fuck around and you do that viral video with the squad if you want to bite into that Popeye chicken Shit. sandwich Bernie, that'll be it for you but all, that's all I'm saying is like I, I truly think that if we address poverty now it will not this rising tide lifts all boats thing Gotta is a guarantee boat, guarantee of course there's of course but I think that we can agree that now the hole is smaller because there are these, there are less of these racist laws that are meant to hold black people down. Matter of fact, there are no laws that are specifically meant to hold black people down, right? So I don't know if that's true or not. So I can't say. I think the last, I think the last law that was, they're not blatant. That's what I'm saying. They're not, they're not right. blatantly overt racist. That, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. they're still there. I think the last like overtly uh, uh, prejudice rule law was like uh, no gay marriage, and I think we got rid of that. So I think. I think if you really look at it, just the law, not how it affects you, just the law. I think that we don't have any more laws that are prejudiced. I mean, it's still things that affect people as far as like getting jobs, as far as getting bank loans, as far as but getting, there's no law. getting loans for houses. But there's no law that says it, right? There's laws, they're, they're just not overt. Like they're not, they're not overtly racist, but they do disproportionately affect certain communities. Yes, I'm not denying that. Yeah. I'm not denying that. 
I guess what I'm saying is, so if you address poverty now, it will be at bare minimum better than it was in the past because addressing poverty in the past only helped the people that were poor but were part of the inside crew. Whereas now the inside crew is bigger because we've removed a lot of these overtly racist laws. Is that fair? Yes. And I think that we... Um, well, what do you think the hole in the boat is? Like if you if you were talking about The hole in the boat is years and years of shit that had never been fixed or repaired, Chris. This no, is, no, I know. This but is, I'm this saying is, like... This is damage has been done that's never been repaired. But what, like no. specifically, like if you were working with him, you were like... And Jim Crow segregation, slavery, mass incarceration. No, he's saying like, I'm what, saying what like, do we no, do I'm to, put, that. to oh, fix the hole? What like, would you like tell him? Like, what do you want to put in the hole? To be honest with you, I think some form... Not some form, some yeah, some form of reparations right. is absolutely the start. Like that's the only way. Like you have to make amends for the sins that America has created against black people. And listen, the sin, the, the reparations ain't checks and ain't here. Here's a check. Here's a check. It's some. It's I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's free college. I don't know if it's you know exempt no taxes. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's something that has to be done specifically by America, American government to. This community of black people to that Af to those African descendants of slaves mm -hmm. whose families were affected by slavery, Jim Crow segregation, mass incarceration, whatever the fuck it is. And I've heard different variations. You know, Killer Mike talks about you know making the marijuana industry, as, but he said as a form of and see, that's a whole other argument. He said as a form of drug war reparations, not even. Slavery and segregation. He said marijuana should just be for drug war reparations. Mm, the war on drugs it. that negatively imp impacted black people. Yep. But that's, that's why I like the conversations that are happening now when people are actually talking about the fact that things were systemically done to keep their foot on black people's necks. It's not like black people didn't want to come up. I don't think, I don't think anybody denies that, that understands history. I think there, it's if there... word, understands history. Yeah, and that's yeah. the key word. Don't get me wrong. I mean... Um, I've said on this podcast, I think the best argument for reparations is not uh, the fact that there was slavery. It's the fact that there were all these laws put in place so these people couldn't lift themselves up after Absolutely. slavery. Absolutely. Goddamn And I think that because if you want to look at slavery, you're going to have to give reparations to every single group of people on this planet because we've all been slaves at one point in time or another. Right. But when you don't let people rise, you create a problem. So you have to rectify that problem. Sure. How we do that. We don't know exactly yet. I think that we're getting close. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, like, Killer Mike has a practical solution. That's one of the first things I've said. I mean, that was the idea with the casinos with Native Americans, right? It was like, yeah. hey, okay, they got land. What are they going to do with the land? Land means nothing if you're not doing something. Why don't mm -hmm. we give them literally a mint? We'll give them a printing press of money. Casino. Mm -hmm. There you go. See what you do with it. Mm -hmm. Are we going to give black people casinos? Is marijuana the new tobacco? You know, a million dollar industry, like or billion. Bill, or sorry, billion Absolutely. dollar industry. It, it, I mean, it definitely will be, but I like I like Killer Mike's idea for that. Make that drug war reparations. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But as far as and that's what the, that's what the whole HR 40 thing is, right? Rest in peace to John Kanye. Is that he actually died this week or last week? This week. But HR 40 is is the study. Wait a minute, John Connors or or Elijah? Both, Both of them died. Both died. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. John yeah. died right after Elijah. Um. Oh my God. HR 40 is the study. Of reparations, right? And not just and people say, "Oh, what you mean the study? We know what happened." No, it's actually the study of how much is how much damage was actually. Well, why do you done. need a bill to do that? Why I can't you just study know. it? That's how fucking <laughs> no. lazy these politicians are. You see how these fucking politicians <laughs> refuse to do start. any work? They don't do want to do shit. Hey, do we should we do some work? No, no. Let's try to find some way where <laughs> we don't have to do it. Hey, should we do a bill to see if we should do some work? <laughs> How about you go to fucking work and do some work, you lazy pieces of fucking human garbage. Oh, my God. Human pieces of shit. Listen. Not a hardworking bone in any of their bodies. Why do you think Bernie's having heart attacks? Because he's actually working. No, he's Bernie's, the only one working. Bernie's having heart attacks because he's 97 years old, and he is out there stressing himself out, and I don't know what the fuck for. No. That might, he must really be a patriot. He, wanna, you gotta he really wants love America. it, bro. He wants it. There ain't no way in hell. If I was Bernie, I'd be sitting around with my feet kicked up, minding my goddamn business, helping where I can. And nice little Vermont, watching reruns of fucking, what was that show that used to come on in Vermont? There's a Vermont show? Yes. What was Murder, the show that she was wrote? In Vermont? Was it Murder, She Wrote? I don't know. I have no idea what it don't matter. TV sitcom. It does matter because I had a good joke, but I fucked it up. <laughs> I I, 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 honestly, I don't think Six a show is under. Six Feet Under. But that was New Hampshire. Nah, it wasn't. I don't Six think Feet a show has ever been in Vermont. Nah, it was, man. It's a popular show. Vermont. New Heart. Oh, yeah, you're right. New Heart, man. 
You're right. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. <laughs> new heart? You don't remember new Stop heart? Stop making Bernie jokes. <laughs> 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 oh, we might have to do that at a live show. Just tighten it up a little bit. <laughs> that will do, that's when the shot goes in. He's like, oh, shit, he hit that? <laughs> Holy shit. Real Listen, talk. Man. That motherfucker wants to help, bro. I literally disagree with almost every one of his economic policies, but he wants to help, so I'm like, okay, nah, I trust him. Nah, listen, when I say I Bernie, when I, when, I, when, I, when I talk to people... And I've said this over the past couple of weeks. The reason I say Bernie does seem like the best bet because he duly, he truly does seem like he wants to help. Say it, bro. He does, like, he does, he does, he does, he does. And I, I feel that way about Senator Harris too. I think Senator Harris truly wants to help. You know what I'm saying? But, I, she, but, she lost me when she was like, take away Trump's Twitter because I can never be on the side of censorship. And if you're willing to censor anybody, then... What makes you? St- what what stops you from censoring me? What stops you from shutting down my YouTube? What stops you from shutting down the radio show because you don't like something they say? I mean, see that. See, I know people will hear this. And I be can't like, do what? that. People will hear this and be like, "That's that's a terrible issue tonight." But yo, you're a comedian. That shit means everything. That's to you. everything. I'm, <laughs> yes, that's so my I, voting, right? I, I got to vote on my I issues. Yeah. Why that one issue would af- would keep you from voting for her? Hundred yeah. percent. Listen, before we get out of here, I do want to say something. Um, you know, we talked about validation and like affirmation, like yes. you know, from your parents and stuff like that. It does. You do get that from your peers too, bro. Mm. Not even peers. Forget the peers. The legends, right? Oof. I was online and I was like, I was reading this article by Arsenio Hall because y'all know I worship Arsenio Hall. Like I've always talked about. My Can love you for give Arsenio a little Hall. a little background to? why Arsenio was such a legend for these young people listening and might well, not be as familiar as us? For me growing up, you know, um, Arsenio, this is when Fox was like the cool, edgy network, right? So Fox had like in Living Color, mm-hmm. and Martin, mm-hmm. and you know, Simpsons, Simpsons yeah. and Tracy Ullman show. Like they wasn't like the big three of NBC, ABC, no. CBS. They were All rogue, that shit dude. was buttoned up, you yeah. know what I mean? And like, I couldn't really relate to none of the late night shows that used to come on NBC, ABC, CBS. I didn't see black people on there. Yeah. Johnny, I recognize his talent, but that was it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't yeah. care about the variety show shit. Arsenio was so for us, by us, and he was on this cool ass, edgy network, and he was there as a fill in. That was the ill part that people forget. Arsenio started off as a fill in. I forgot whose show it was. Maybe it was John. Was it John Rivers? Rivers, maybe? Maybe it was, it was somebody that Arsenio was filling in and it was a 13-week run. And he smoked this 13 weeks so much and had everybody, it seemed like when you talk about everybody, like black people gathering around and it's like, he created this cult-like following. I mean, the dog pound, woof, 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 he from Cleveland. Like, like it's just, it was just something about Arsenio. And then you saw us on this show. He would have the cast of Living Single on. Like when I interviewed the cast of Girlfriends the other day, I kept envisioning that because if you go back and watch the interview with Living Single, they were all sitting on these like high stools almost. And that's what we in the gr- cast of the girlfriends. And I was sitting there thinking like, oh shit. Like it felt like that. Uh, yeah. Wu-Tang would perform. I remember seeing Snoop Dogg perform on there and Bow Wow coming out. Tupac Wilding on the couch. Like he'd have Minister Farrakhan, Farrakhan on. He'd have people like um, Barry White on. But Barry White would be on there dropping jewels. Like the conversations would never be just about like music or anything else. Like he'd be having these real in depth conversations with these people, you would really see these people in a different light. You you hear about their spirituality and just the things that they were into that kept them going, right? And so, I, I, even to this day, I watch Arsenio Hall interviews. You know what I'm saying? I watch how he does his monologues. I watch how he does his his interviews. I just I just watch his show. Like whenever I'm even in meetings, I'm like, y'all want to do a mix of Arsenio Hall meets Bill Maher. Like that's the type of late night show I would want to create, right? So I was excited, y'all. Arsenio Hall got a Netflix special coming out, yeah. right? Which I love. I, these, I grew up on Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall. So watching Dolomite, which is, we got to talk we about Dolomite. We got to talk about really. that, yeah, yeah. Dolomite, phenomenal movie. But then I'm watching Arsenio Hall and I'm watching, I'm, I'm hearing about the Netflix special. So I'm just reading articles about him because I just like to see where his mind is. And I'm in the article. Matter of fact, I need to read this verbatim. This needs to be read verbatim. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, I'm, I was really gassed yesterday. Like really gassed. Let me read this verbatim. Let me read this. This is Arsenio Hall. Arsenio said the niche his show filled in the 1990s has largely been taken over by YouTube and social media. I think now the Arsenio Hall of our society is Charlemagne the God, he said. That's morning New York radio that you can get on YouTube anytime you want. 
Hall recalled how rapper Tupac Shakur, who died in 1996, would come on his show to make announcements and respond to media reports. When I think about Tupac calling me and saying, yo, man, they got me hinned up in some shit. Can I come on the show and talk? Tupac used to use my show like you use Twitter. So maybe I was the Twitter of that era. But now I think if Tupac were alive and had something he needed to get off his chest, he'd probably fly to New York and run up to Charlemagne. Let me tell you something. I don't give a fuck what you trolls got to say on me, say to me on social media no more. I don't give a fuck if you like me. I don't give a fuck if you podcasters, if you other radio personalities. Say whatever the fuck you want about me. I'm good. <laughs> All right. I am the Arsenio Hall of this society. And you respect <laughs> me as such, goddammit. Right. <laughs> okay? I don't give a fuck. Y'all think y'all invented that shit? Bruh, that shit, listen, when I saw that shit, I told my mom, bro. I said, my mom's with me this week. She says, yeah, my house in Jersey. I said, mama, do you understand what Arsenio Hall said to me? Because that's the, that's the woman that used to make me go to bed. So she could watch. No, you got to care. It's too late for you to be up. You got school tomorrow. I see you. I was taking the VHS tapes, recording Ma Arsenio Martin, 8 o'clock, all that shit. Like, for him to say that, you don't give a fuck what any, any of y'all motherfuckers got to say. Do you really think I care about what any of y'all got to say to hear Arsenio Hall, a real goat, a real legend, yeah. who has done something that no black person has done since? Yeah. For him to recognize me in that light, I'm good. And not only am I good, it made me really appreciate where I am. Because a lot of times we think that we have to, and I'm not saying I wouldn't want this, but I've always had dreams of having a late night show. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, what if I already got what I'm searching for? Dude, we had and this just combo. just not in the form of that. Dude, we had this combo a few months back. It's like, it's so easy to get caught up in like what we don't have. Yeah. And like, this is what, yo, think about it like this. What time do you think people listen or watch your interviews? All day. Whenever they want to. Yeah. All Whenever, day. But, hey. probably, but probably more so at nighttime when they're at home after work chilling. Yeah. There is no late night show. There is no morning show. Right. There is no afternoon show. Time does not constrict content. Mm. So your dream of a late night show, you only wanted, and very similar to Dolomite, right? You only wanted that thing that you saw everybody watching at one time. Why could we all watch at night? Because we weren't working at night. And there was no social media. And there was no social there was media. No other platforms. We had no choice. We had no choice. That <laughs> yeah, was there, right? Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. so, so we go, I want a late night show. No, we don't. We just want all the eyes. We just want to create content. It, we I want to create content yeah. that, that our people, yeah. right? And our people is defined by way more than just race. It's it's by who identifies with us. But our people want to indulge in. I. So what I'm saying is, yes, you already have that. Because those people are watching those interviews. At all times of night. And you, those interviews don't become better when they're on at 1130. But, but, but I'm older, right? I get, everything you're saying is absolutely true. I'm just telling you my, why my thought process was like this for so long. Right. I come from that era where that was it. Uh, uh, we're grandfathered into it. Grandfathered we're, into and, it. It takes time for us to unlearn, unlearn. this bullshit that was put unlearn, in our head. Unlearn. Because I, 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 I said to myself the other day, I said, man, I, I, I get more interest from Joe Rogan interviews. Like I watched, I listened to that Edward Snowden shit. I couldn't put that shit down. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing on TV making me feel that way. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because like, this is the new ver dude. Real quickly, we'll talk about Dolomite because I know we got to get out of here. But Dolomite is what what I mean. There's so I knew, many. I knew that shit was gonna resonate with you when I was watching oh, it. I was God, like, dude. But I, I said, I said, yo, everybody needs to watch this movie if you're a creative. Everybody, dude. I am Dolomite. Dola White. <laughs> I am Dola White. That's the name of the podcast. I am Dola White. <laughs> Dola White. For real, man. But it was that, that... I didn't know shit about Rudy Ray Moore, by the son, way. Son, I knew nothing about him, right? But remember the point when he looks in the lights? He, he looks, looks at the lights, lights coming and down saw, and projecting yeah, 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 a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he has this moment where he goes, when I'm performing in front of an audience, I can affect that audience. But if I'm on that movie screen, I can be everywhere at once. He's predicting, he's understanding the internet game 
But that was the internet of his time. Yeah. If you were on movie screens, you were around the whole world. If you're performing live, you're only right there. Same thing with TV. Now we have a better version of that movie screen. We have... That light from your phone, that light from your computer. The light from your fucking phone or computer yeah, where they're yeah, watching yeah, these yeah. interviews at all these different times. Yeah. You do those interviews at night, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the a.m. Yeah. People still gonna watch on their phone. And by the way, everything that he did in that movie is shit that we already know he's supposed to do. That, like, you know how many times he sat it. in his fucking room and like, yo... We gotta shoot a movie one day. Like now, it's just a, it's just doing it, dude. Not only do we have to shoot a movie one day, we would have conversations, and you you would we would we would walk into the MTV two things, and we'd be like, "Yo," and you would have this idea where we had to satirize like a horror film or something like that, where like they were taking over the world or some shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you're like, it's not serious. We're gonna make fun of the genre. Yeah, yeah. yeah Literally, yeah. what Dolomite did with black exploitation films, making yeah. fun of the genre. Yeah. We were gonna do that with action movies. Guy code. We was gonna do guy. We was gonna do a guy code, girl code, action movie. But spoofing what a superhero absolutely would be. I mean, the fact that like he gets told no by every single person, they don't see it, but he's in front of the people, so he knows what they like. And he trusted his gut. He didn't get discouraged. Ne he just kept pushing. He didn't, he didn't let the industry kill his fucking spirit. And I'm going to tell you the other lesson in that movie. And I don't want to give it away for y'all. We wait another week, maybe we talk about it. But the fact that learning from anyone. You understand what I'm saying? Like, mm. like you, you can't teach somebody who's not willing to learn. Like, think about the person he dismissed from that store. That person he was dismissing from the store, it finally hit him that, this is the shit I need to be doing. Yeah. Like to actually go down there with that tape recorder, record and learn from all of those different people, mm. not look down upon them. Yeah. Changed his fucking life. Yeah. And that's what you got to do. Like you got to remain teachable. Um, always be willing to learn and don't get discouraged, bro. And don't be afraid to do shit yourself. Mm. That was the other shit. The music industry told him, fuck you. I'll make my own album, put it out. Now you got to come back and suck in my dick. In his fucking house. That's right. Dude, I'm watching this and I'm just like, holy, is this like the mirror image of what I what I went the, through? The movie shit was like, the hardest part to me though. Because I'm like, yo, for him to raise all that money to do a movie, like it's one thing to do music. To say, fuck it, I'm going to shoot a movie and I'm going to tell you what else. When the movie finally came out and he finally sold it and everything and critics still panned it, he looked at that paper and said, this is good. Because they're going to come out. Gonna come, this is good. And But, but the, the, he didn't give a fuck. He had the people. Bro. The people supported that shit and loved it. Critics don't know what the fuck they talking about. When, nobody, nobody loses the right tomato score from the critics. critics. We don't care what they have to say. There's a, I, there's a scene, you know, when they're putting together the movie and they're literally like scraping money together and they have people who are doing shit for free and they're holding cameras up and they're stealing electricity and they're, they're doing all this bullshit to barely make it happen, right? Mm-hmm. I remember when we filmed Views from the Sis, my my uh, last special before the crowd work one, Alex came out to uh, Europe with me and Matt also came out to Europe with me. And when we we're filming the England show to balance one of the cameras and shout to DeMarcus as well, we we're balancing one of the cameras with a stick of gum. Mm -hmm. That's what we, we created. This special that ended up getting millions of fucking views. One of the cameras is just on a ledge in the back of the fucking room. Balance with a stick of gum so it didn't look <laughs> really? crooked. Yeah. But that's what we had to do because we believed in the fucking content. We knew if we put it out, it would hit and the people would want it. Mm -hmm. and, and to see a guy create like a genre film and like so much success off of like self-belief and just understanding what the people yes, truly man. wanted. Just power to the people. It's saying shit Tyler Perry has done. That's people it. say what they want about Tyler Perry's art. Tyler Perry has done nothing but cater to one mm -hmm. audience, and that shit has garnered him so much success mm -hmm. and so much resources that he got that big ass studio in Atlanta that you saw that beautiful picture this week of Wesley Snipes, Will Smith, Eddie Murphy, and fucking who else is in that picture? Martin Eddie, Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. Yeah. All on that set at his studio because he catered to one audience, one audience only, and didn't give a fuck what everybody else was thinking. That's the game, baby. Hey, man. Hey, man. God uh, bless. We appreciate y'all. Thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. Go subscribe to everybody's respective YouTubes. Yes. Uh, YouTube. YouTube.com slash see the God. You know, they send you a plaque after 100,000 subscribers. They do. And I've never gotten mine. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yo, YouTube.com slash see the God. Go check that out. Um, YouTube.com slash the Andrew Schultz. Uh, YouTube.com slash I think brilliant idiots pod. I believe. And uh, YouTube.com slash flagrant two. We're growing, man. A lot of cool shit coming out on these on these platforms. And uh, yo, thank y'all so much for supporting, sharing, spreading the word. Word. Like it's the best in the world when you guys 
when you guys spread the word. It means way more when someone else promotes your work than when you do, because that's how you know it's affecting the people. So keep that shit up, man. Thank y'all so much. That's right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Whatever struggles you are facing from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe, private online environment. It's so convenient you can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners, even get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. Um, can I throw some dates in there? Yo, people, um, some dates. Real... Yo, people, some church announcements. I'll be in Chico, California this Friday at the El Rey Theater. Uh, some tickets available. Sacramento, Saturday and Sunday. It's sold out. Then we're coming back to the East Coast. Connecticut, Norwalk, Wall Street Theater, November 14th. The 16th, Wilbur Theater. Second show, there's some tickets left. Uh, and then New York, November 22nd, Matador Tour, Town Hall. First show sold out. Second show has less than 50 tickets left. As I say this to you right now on my phone, get there immediately. Not adding any more shows. That is what it's going to be. And, um, yo, come check that out. It's going to be wild, man. I can't wait. More shows are added to theandrewschultz.com. We got Edmonton. We have, uh, yeah, Edmonton was added. And then we also have, where else? New Orleans. A bunch of other cities. Go to theandrewschultz.com for tickets. Okay, back to the show.